ask all of you to stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. I will read through our agenda, which is lengthy, um, tonight, and then we will get right into business. So we will be starting tonight with, oh, and, and Mr. Graziano is just a few minutes late, but he's on his way. Um, we'll be starting with recognitions, where we'll review our start video and hear about that program. Um, then we'll have our first opportunity for public comment. Uh, that will be followed by reports to the school committee. We'll have the student council report, assuming that the students are here. Um, then we'll have liaison reports, a report from Dr. Zal Dr. Zaleski regarding our ESY handbook. Um, the chair report, the superintendent report, uh, and then we'll go to new business where we will discuss um, some requested budget transfers. We'll have a discussion of policy EBC, safety and security, another discussion of policy JICFB, bullying. Um, sorry. Followed by discussion of policy BDB, school committee officers, and school committee policy GBEB and JLCC, both communicable diseases. Our, follow, our last new business item is um, a peer review fee for our turf field storm project, stormwater management peer review. Then we'll have old business where we'll take up policy IHBB, extended school year, policy BEDH, public participation at committee meetings. Um, policy JH student attendance and then um, our final item under old business will be a further discussion of our superintendent search process following that we'll have our second period for public comment and then we will um, vote on items by consensus and hopefully adjourn by 10 20 but I believe that that is optimistic so <laughs> we'll do our best um, okay so without further ado let's we, Let's start with start. Tee up the startup. I yeah. do want to tee it up, but before I tee it up, I'd like to invite our guests um, to come on up here. So we have Jane Gomes, Kirsten Gleason, Lisa Winner, and Mike Webb um, representing the start program. And if you would like to just go over where those chairs are, um, two of you can sit and two of you can stand because I'm sure there will be questions. But I just want to tee it up by saying um, this is a really exciting moment. Um, for our new school committee members, this is a program that um, Jane and Kirsten wrote the, wrote the grant for three years ago. This is the third year of the program. Um, they wrote the grant and that it has now extended into the middle school, the program has. But the, our high school program has been really a, a state, has set an example for the state, and I think they're using it as a model, correct? Correct. Right. When I saw this video this summer, I was so excited to see, particularly the students, talking about, it's fine for us to sit here and say what a fabulous impact the program has. And school committee, it's really, the timing is critical because we will be coming back as part of our budget discussions to talk about as the third year of the grant, in order to continue this program, we need to be funding it. Um, and that was always understood. But when I saw the students speaking about what this has meant to them, it was, it was so powerful that I thought, well, we can't lose this and look at it in the summer. We need to wait until the fall and have the full impact. And so thank you for coming tonight under recognitions to recognize the wonderful work that you do um, for kids who otherwise maybe wouldn't be noticed. Um, for whom we might not be able to provide the program that we want to provide and this this pathway that you give them to keep them in the school and connected um, so without any further commentary on my part we'll watch the video and then we'll come back um, to hear from you does that sound okay sure. school committee good yeah, wonderful. all right thank you thank you dr. Kavanaugh yeah. we're competing with the pep rally <laughs> Yes, please. It's okay to get help. This program meant so much to me throughout my time here. I never like write this place off. We have done wonders for kids who have been at risk. It's a very good resource in our school. My experience with the START program has been fantastic. You really have confidence in the START program. The START program is actually an exemplar. 
across the state. Well, SPAT is a program that's for all students. It's not designed to be a special education program, a life skills program, a mainstream classroom, an AP program. It's designed for all students who might be out of school for an extended period of time for significant medical issues or psychiatric issues or post-concussive syndrome. So it runs the gamut of students that it can touch on. With a full-time clinician and a full-time academic person, it's, it's a very academic and clinical program. And START stands for Student Therapeutic Academic Resource Team. The support system that START has with all the different teachers and even fellow students, that really helped me because I, you know, I came into school and sometimes I felt like, you know, some people don't know that I was gone, but these people do and they're really trying to help me get back on track and that was, that was probably the, the biggest help to me. In my time throughout the START program, I learned a lot of things. I learned the, the value of taking time for yourself and just relaxing and taking a quick moment to think about what's really important in that moment. Instead of thinking about all your work that's piling up, you just think about the future and you rely on people like Miss Winter. Best hospitalization transition programs are preventative. Um, they're also responsive to the needs of the students. So if a student has missed a significant amount of time due to a medical issue, being in a hospital for psychiatric or medical reasons, if they're experiencing uh, significant emotional issues that are causing them to miss school time, we can help to mitigate the factors that would arise. I will say the START program is the place for kids who have fallen through the cracks in the past. Those kids who have long-term health issues, concussion issues, START has formalized a process of helping each of them individually to get through. We started to notice that we were having many psychiatric hospitalizations and several re-hospitalizations. And what was happening was that when those kids were coming back from the hospitalizations, um, they were being thrown right back into the academic setting, but they needed a lot more support than that. And many of them were regular ed students, so they didn't have access to an academic support room. So we didn't really have a place for them. The our program helped me by providing a safe and uh, comfortable environment for me to catch up on schoolwork and other um, assignments when I was falling behind due to like issues that um, made school work like very difficult for me. I was having, was having some hard, hard times. There, there are a few times where I would, um, you know, either be in class or in between classes, I'm like, you know, I need a, I need a break. I'm not feeling so terrific. I would come in here, and again, there's just such a great support, and there'd be you know, little activities I could do, or just even a quiet space to do my work. So for me, like the start program helped most with like getting me more time to get back into my assignments. Because I missed like two weeks from being out with the concussion and being able to come here in like a peaceful environment where I wasn't just staying after school with a teacher who maybe had to leave right away or I didn't have a lot of time. I could come here and do all my assignments and complete some of my work with more time than I would in like a normal classroom. All of the kids that I have known that have gone through START have come back more prepared, more comfortable. I think is one of the biggest things I've found is that when a student comes back into class after a long period of not being there, there's a lot of anxiety, there's a lot of stress, they don't really know what they're doing, and these kids, when they come back after start, they're ready. Things occur in life, and you need all the resources you can get to get through them, and you know that's what school is supposed to do. It's supposed to give you the resources to succeed, and if you're in a situation where you need those extra resources to succeed, and those resources <laughs> are there, you really need to take advantage of them. Kids need to know that those resources are out there if they're going through difficult times, and the school is willing to help them and keep them on track and, and moving toward graduation. Students spend a differing amount of time with us depending upon their need. Some students are with us all day long. Some students are with us five to ten minutes, lunchtime, part of the period. Uh, what we're providing is academic support and counseling support all day, every day. What makes it different, I think, is that it's very skill-based. Not only do we have a full-time teaching assistant to help with the academics, but we utilize the um, skills to teach students how to manage stress or how to manage either anxiety or depression, how your thinking can become skewed, 
when you're dysregulated emotionally. So managing your body, calming your body down, challenging your thoughts, and also how to actually do some physical coping skills. Throughout the program, I started doing meditation and yoga, and that practice really helped me to take time to think for myself. And Miss Winner showed me a bunch of links on meditation, and I used their sand that they had in the in the room, and it just really helped me just think about the moment and living in the moment. Giving myself time to relax and sort of catch my breath from day-to-day stresses really helped, and I still do that today. I've learned to recognize things that they learn in the start room, whether it has to do with breaks or it has to do with anxiety, you know, or relaxation methods. I have a couple of students that I have seen go on to like a website or go on to an app and you get, my first reaction is to like turn that off, but I, I've learned to recognize some of the things that they use to calm themselves when they're feeling more anxious or, you know, when I can tell when a student needs a break and having those kids specifically pointed out to me at some point, you know, these are the students that we work with, these are the students that you might see these things from is really beneficial. Last year I had a student that was in long-term concussion protocol. This was in an AP class and it was a class that had already been very challenging for him even before that and he was out for a long time. When he got back, they did a great job of kind of reintegrating him and he was able to get that work finished and actually at the end of the year he got a four on the AP exam and was just thrilled and they deserve a lot of the credit for that. So we do consultation with teachers with administration, with the school nurse, we work with outside providers, we work with the family, uh, and we do a lot of advocacy for the student here at the school. The STAR program really helped me get organized and uh, negotiate with teachers, and that really helped me get back on track before the end of the semester, which was huge. I probably would have, wouldn't have been able to do it on my own, and definitely like this, the stress would have been a lot higher if I didn't I would definitely say that the amount of time it took me to get back into school was shortened because of the program. I know some people have had like a whole semester that's just ruined because of the time that they had to take off. For me, I got right back into my assignments and actually, I guess you could say it was a good and a bad thing that my time in start was short. I will tell you I was skeptical at first, me being a math person and thinking how can kids miss any amount of math and be successful. But the program has proved me wrong is I've seen long-term success of students with challenging and delicate situations last year be successful this year. So that is my great takeaway about the program is that we have kids who have truly bounced back. I really was not sure about it at first. After I came back to school, I was like, hey, I'm, I'm good. I think I'm just going to go right, right back into school and all my classes and all that. But I kind of realized that I did need to take a break sometimes, and very well could um, really, really help you get back on track. The STAR program is honestly a great opportunity for people that are struggling with any kind of problem. Really work with the people in the STAR, the teachers, even other students, and just try to pick up ways to cope with difficulties. It's honestly just a place that's, that only people can benefit. A big thing is never like written off as an option, always give it a chance and if you do come in here, almost everybody thinks it is helpful, almost everybody that gives it a chance, enjoys it and stays in the program for as long as they need. And this program is absolutely necessary because after you get a concussion, everything feels like you're just in a whirlpool, everything's coming at you. People are saying, oh, did you get this assignment done yet? Did you get this done yet? And at that moment, you're just struggling with everyday tasks, like walking up the stairs, like brushing your teeth, like you just want to be able to sleep and just get everything out of the way. Teachers are flexible and willing to work with you. So just knowing that really helped me move past my concussion and move past all the symptoms that come with it. And I wouldn't trade my time at the start room for anything else. Just blown away with your work. It's amazing. Thank you.
And when did you all start this? Can you speak a little bit more about that? Sure. Well, we, um, the, the Metro West Health Foundation um, had a initiative. One of their initiatives was adolescent mental health. So we got right on that and we wrote a grant for the program. And we looked at um, the data that we had for hospitalizations, rehospitalizations, out of district placements, and home hospital tutoring. And so that data really provided the um, justification for the grant. And um, then we were fortunate to hire Lisa Winner, who she can speak a little bit about the experience she came to the program with. I had started at one of the original six programs in Concord Carlisle High School mm. and had been there for six years prior to coming here. And we were able to partner with Castlebrook Counseling, which is a DBT, Dialectical Behavior Therapy, um, agency and so we have uh, their um, principal founder is a consult to the program and and we have infused the skills not only in the start program but we've um, she's run some in services for faculty and TAs and special ed so it's um, and that and now as you know we're introducing mindfulness into the um, the greater school environment so yeah that's great so I, I was uh, on the committee when the original grant w was written, so I remember you, you coming initially and, and talking to us about it. So it's uh, one of the rewarding things to see the, the, the output of it and how great the program is. And um, recognitions is almost always my favorite part of the meeting, which is why I don't know why we do it at the beginning. But um, because it's just a reminder, again, of how fortunate we are in this district to have such a committed um, staff at all levels of the school. I mean, this is this is a program that you recognized an opportunity. You went out on your own to 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 try to to bring this into Hopkinton, and it, the student testimonials obviously speak for themselves. But it's it's focused on a group of students who probably don't aren't at the front of a lot of people's minds in terms of the needs that they have beyond the normal academic day. And so I would just, uh, you know, congratulate and thank you again for, for bringing this program to the district because clearly it's added so much value. So it's, it's really appreciated by the community more than you know. Thank you. Thank you. Well said. Yeah, no, I think it's just another uh, incredible example of, of the sincerity behind the commitment that this district and particularly this high school has made to social, social emotional health of our students. And um, I think... I think it was in the video or one of you said it, but so easy for people to fall off course and fall through the tracks, through the cracks because of a minor, even a minor physical or medical setback. Um, and to just have that safety net right here within the context of the school and still being able to be part of the culture in the school day, even if you need a break um, from time to time, I just think that that is a tremendous resource. And I thank you so much for seeing the need there and finding a way um, to fill it free of charge to start out with and test drive it. That's always a, that's always a good selling point for us. But I think um, it's been really helpful for us to see the impact of it over time um, as we go into the budget season where obviously we're going to have to discuss adding this in. But I, I just think it brings tremendous value. And thank you so much once again for making us look good, uh, but mostly for taking care of the students. And I'll just add, because we're still in recognitions, that under your items by consensus tonight, you will note that there was a gift yet yes. again this year, um, this year from Glenn and Linda Griffiths for $2,500 um, for a donation to the START program. And there was a, a similar donation last year um, from a family that was just so appreciative of the difference that you made for their, for their student um, that, you know, it just it speaks to how powerful it is so thanks again thank you so much we really appreciate it okay. okay so with that we are at our first opportunity for public comment and I think I know we have some people here who want to talk to us so you come on up and we'll have you sit um, over here <coughs> um, just where they were sitting so that the microphone can pick you up for for H cam okay I'll pass these and then um, dr. Kavanaugh are you helping with the okay thank you very much
Can I do enough? And we'll just, so if you can sit there, so the microphone will be able to pick you up so the people at home can hear you. And if you can just introduce yourself so we know who you are and then let us know what's on your mind. So first of all, I was gonna tip my hat to the folks who put together that start program. Yes. Amazing. Yeah. That's just truly amazing. And thank you for the time uh, for letting us present to you. Sure. So, my name is Rajiv Ramdas, and I'm going to be a resident of Legacy Farms North. Currently, I'm living in Legacy Farms South, and my kids are going to the school here. Okay, I'm Prashant Kulkarni, uh, going to be a future resident of Hopkinton. Looking forward to be a part of the great community and the school over here. Welcome. So, so let me jump right into it. Uh, if you could go to the next slide, please. So currently, when we are looking at the school bus, it's actually coming and stopping at the intersection of Franklin Road and the Legacy Farms North Road. That arrow at the bottom indicates where the bus comes, and the arrow at the top indicates where the entrance to the Legacy Farms North is. So next slide, please. So if you look at the distance, so we can see that there's a significant distance between the entrance and that uh, bus stop. That's about 0.5 miles at this time. And if we actually look at the distance towards the back, it's somewhere around 0.8 to 1 miles. And that blue spot actually shows the first house in that complex, which is currently occupied. Okay. And we can also see in this picture that it's very sparsely populated. There are no houses in between that bus stop and getting to Legacy Farm. So next slide, please. So we have uh, significant student safety concerns. So kids have to walk up to a mile uphill and downhill. And I'll show you a picture. Walk to the houses inside Legacy Farms from the bus stop. <coughs> About by December, there are going to be 30 students who are doing that, and we can give you a list. Uh, there is significant public downtown bypass traffic on that road. That is that road is purpose built to be a bypass to so that uh, automobiles can cut over to 85. So there's significant traffic there. Uh, it's a very steep sidewalk, and we think that there are going to be treacherous conditions during the snow and ice buildup during winter months. Students walking up and down that steepy, si steep icy sidewalk with heavy backpacks and musical instruments is an invitation for accidents. And it's a very unpopulated neighborhood between Franklin and the gate of Legacy Farms North. I know that in this very uh, kind of world with uh, amber alerts and stuff, we can almost guess uh, what those safety concerns are. So next slide. So this is a picture of looking from the bus stop all the way up. So you can see it's a steep uphill climb. So the first picture is the, from the bus stop on towards Legacy Farms North. And you can see, you can't even see those houses. It's that steep that are going up. And then once you get to that steep, there's still further uh, places to walk up there. And I j just wanted to show you what it looked like there up and down. So next slide, please. So what are the details? So currently the bus is not going into the Legacy Farms North Road, and we talked to the school transportation department and said they said it's technically a private road because it has not been handed over to the town so far, so they cannot run buses up there. Uh, but this road was built as a public-private joint project with $5 million public funding from Massworth. So it is publicly funded road. There is public traffic going over there, uh, and the town has a lien on the road currently. But it is technically owned as a private road by the Land Owners Association of Legacy Farms at this point. Uh, one other significant problem is, as you saw in the picture, if the parents start queuing up at that intersection with cars to drop kids off, that can cause traffic jams there with all the office time traffic that goes on at the same time. So next slide, please. So uh, as I said, the Legacy Farms North owns that road currently as a public, uh, as a private road. It has not been turned over the ta to the town. And given by going by what we have heard and some of the challenges in handing it over, we don't think that it's likely that it will be handed over as a public road to the town in the next three to four years. So uh, we want to see what are the options to get the bus to go up while it is still a private road. So that's kind of why we are here today. And we do notice that neighboring towns like Westboro make exceptions to run buses through private developments. Plus, the state law also provides uh, exceptions when it's really to ensure student safety, as I outlined. Uh, next slide, please. 
So here's the request. Uh, bringing the school bus to the intersection of Legacy Farms North and Spruce Street will ensure that the students do not have to walk on steep, icy roads with heavy backpacks from mostly unpopulated neighborhood with significant vehicular traffic. And if you look at that road, there is not even speed signs posted on that road at this point. Uh, Legacy Farms North is truly different from other private roads because this is uh, this is not a truly private road. It was built with public funds and used regularly for public traffic that benefits the town. So we think, uh, we want to ask what is the best way to see if we can get an exception to for the school buses to come there. So I know there was some talk that probably it's the selectmen, board of selectmen, but we know that the school committee is very concerned about student safety and has significant decision-making uh, power. So we wanted to make sure you had all the details regarding this, and that's why we came here today. Okay. Well, thank you very much for bringing this to us. Um, and you are right, the challenge, I believe, is because it's a, not currently a public road, um, and I, I understand the distinctions um, as you raise them. And I'll defer to um, Susan Rothermick, who's our finance director and manages our transportation department, but I believe the, the crux of the issue is the insurance for the buses and whether or not they can travel on those roads. That said, uh, if there's a conversation that the selectmen can have with town council about if there's an intermediary agreement that could be raised, I'm sure we would be willing to entertain that um, conversation. I know this has been an issue with other, other public roads, um, but I'm not a lawyer or a financial expert, so I will turn you over to Ms. Rothermick. And does that sound reasonable that we could talk to them about that? Or it, I mean, that's correct. The really. I, I won't say it's rare. You know, you, you stated that Westboro has made exceptions to running on private roads. In all the districts that I've worked in and districts that I've spoken to, nobody brings a bus onto a private road. So okay. that being said, that is the position that Hopkinton is also doing as well. Um, so that's, that's not unusual not to bring buses down because of all, a multitude of reasons. Um, so... You know, there. I don't know that there is a process. The Board of Selectmen could be the, the beginning of that process. Um, the other piece to it that you will hear, no matter where you live in town, that it is always the parent responsibility to get their child to and from the bus stop. So um, that's another factor to keep in mind when, when we're developing the bus stops. It is always the parent responsibility to get them to and from that bus stop, no matter where you live in town, you know, public road. Um, and our responsibility comes when the child boards the bus. So that that's so you mentioned two things: the safety of the children getting to and from. That really is not school committee jurisdiction. That really is a parent responsibility, and that's for everyone. Um, and then the other piece being the private road. So, as I said, we're just looking for help, for ideas to yeah. see how we can all work together, the school, the town, the builder, the, de the developer, all of them, so that we can see what the best process might be. So we are mostly looking yeah. for advice and mm. what can be done. I think my suggestion would be to um, schedule some time to talk to the town manager. I don't know what's in the host community agreement, if there was something you know, in there that contemplated this scenario or if the town council has advice about that. But um, I think if you could talk to him and then whatever, you know, conversation needs to happen between the Board of Selectmen and the school committee, absolutely please come back to us and let us know. Okay? Is there a representation if they ask, okay, have you been to the school, who would you speak to? Is there a point of contact when you say, okay, we need to get in? If they say go back, okay, this is the problem we need to solve with the school committee. So whom do we get in touch at the school committee and say, okay, if you were to bridge that link, so it's going to be a combination of conversations. Right? It's going right. to be town, it's going to be the uh, current <coughs> owner, Bless you. whom the lean is, and it's going to be uh, school, and it's going to be us. So we are trying to, we have spoken to the uh, landowners and the builders, we are trying to get in touch with the town, we have spoken to the town once, yep. trying to get in touch with the school. So whom would we have to work with in the school? So, well, I'm the chair of the school committee. You can always email me, and I can direct your, or Dr. McLeod is the superintendent. I would say start with either one of us, and we'll make sure that the conversation gets to the right person, absolutely. Um, and she works very closely with the town manager, probably on a daily basis. So, um, yeah, so either one of us. Perfect. And uh, ha have you seen something like this before? Hopkinton is an old town. So 
have you seen something like this before and what has been a, 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 a solution or part of a solution for, for such situations? In my nine years, no. I, 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 I think I'm the oldest. Um, <laughs> Maybe that's not good. Longest term. Most tenured. <laughs> Most tenured. Um, so no, I'm not aware that an exception has been made, and we have had a lot of development in the town in those nine years. But you know, that said, you know, it doesn't mean that you shouldn't ask the questions. I completely understand your safety concerns. I, I um, you what know, what makes this truly unique is that it is built with public funds and it has significant public traffic. Mm -hmm. rather than other private. But thank yeah. you so much for your well, time Well, thank today. you very much, and good thank luck, you. and we'll wait to hear back, okay? Thank, thank, you. thank you. Okay, so I think we have two students here for our student council report. Yeah. Uh, was there any other public comment before Oops. I move on? I'm sorry. Okay. I'm so sorry. You were waiting so patiently. I thought you were with them. Please come on. Okay. My name is Christina Anderson. Oh, yeah, hi. And uh, I don't remember who I emailed, but... Um, that was me. Okay, so I was looking for permission to use part of the center trail from Main Street to Mr. Terry's Field for a Halloween walk that I'm putting together with some of the other teenagers in town. Yeah. And it was told to me that you guys have part of that under your jurisdiction, so I would need to get also permission from you. Yeah. I've already been in front of the Board of Selectmen, so they're going to vote on it at their next meeting. Okay. Um, but I have permission from Mr. Terry. I have permission from the daycare center across the street to use a parking lot. It's going to be Sunday, October 29th. So, yeah, I did email you back. I don't know if you saw that this afternoon. I don't know myself which portion of the center trail we have responsibility for. Um, I, you're not talking about the part that's our cross-country trail. You're talking just about further Main up. Street to yeah. Just so I, I sent you the link to the um, facilities use application, and so you can fill that out and send it in to Lou Sanborn. But I don't know particularly if that part. Mm -hmm. That's great advice. I don't know if that part is really even right, in our jurisdiction, but Lou will know that. There is a part off the um, Loop Road, correct? That that connects up to the Loop Road. Is that the part? She's just well, talking about the top part far. from oh. from yeah. Maine from 135 to. Probably um, not within our jurisdiction at all. Probably not. I don't think so, but Lou will will know that for sure. So that link that I sent you has the application and, and where to send it, and she can give you a more informed answer than I can. <laughs> okay. And congratulations all right. for all your effort to yeah, put together great. a fun <laughs> event. My goodness. <laughs> thank you, and I'm sorry. You're not doing the art on the trail, so I might as well come up with something. Yeah, it sounds really well, fun. Thank you for your patience. I didn't mean to skip over you. Sorry. No, that's fine. Thank you. Thank you for catching that. All right. Now I believe we are ready for our student liaison report. So Girls, I have your names written down, but can you introduce yourselves? Because I'm not sure who's who, which is which. Sure. Um, I'm Celia Potis. And I'm Emma Edwards. Welcome. Thank you. Um, Go ahead. Um, I'm going to try to make this quick because you guys have a lot to talk about. So, mm -hmm. okay. um, last, no, sorry, this week on Thursday, we had NHS. Wednesday. Wednesday. <laughs> we had NHS inductions, which was really exciting for a lot of students. Um, it's been an accomplishment. Um, this week has been Spirit Week too, which has been really fun. Um, do you want to talk about that? Sure. Okay. <laughs> so, um, leading up to the big pep rally starting tomorrow, um, we've had, as Emma said, uh, each day has been like a different uh, way for the grades to dress up, which has been really cool. And then tomorrow is like the unifying day where um, all the classes gather, each in a different part of the gym, like on their own. Um, different bleachers and we have about an hour to play a bunch of games and do some fun events that um, get the school like working together and really like pumped up uh, to be here um, and we're all inside decorating right now actually oh we and didn't notice yes <laughs> you're so quiet <laughs> sorry about the music but um I liked it <laughs> I did too <laughs> but um yeah so that's just one thing a lot of people look forward to because uh, it's one of the fun events that all the grades get to participate in and everyone kind of gets to have their own share and experience it for themselves but also you know get a feel for how Hopkinton runs and how welcoming we are. Terrific. Fantastic. And then tomorrow night's the football game? Yes. yes. And what time is that? I believe it's 7 o'clock. 7, yeah. yeah. And, and so who will we be be beating at homecoming? Yeah, I like the Medfield? I want to say it's either Medfield or Medfield. <coughs> 
But um, one of the men. <laughs> All right, we need head shields. We did. Yeah. We're yeah, four yeah. hour now, so we're doing good. We are right, four so now, and we need med fields, so it's maybe Midway. the Medway. Yes, All right. sports All are doing right. very well. Yeah, I think they just played Medway, so I think it is. Or sure. they played Medfield, so they're playing Correct. Medway. Yeah. Right. But yeah, student council has had a big part in that too, because we um have our fundraiser. Oh, yeah. during the games, which is uh, very successful, too. We've also been raising money for um, the past hurricanes that have happened within the school, so that's been very successful as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then also along with raising money, we just had a Penny Wars, which is a great way for the class to compete against each other, and um, they do that by having like, a fun challenge of who can have like the most pennies and not the most amount of other different coins or dollars. And so the results for the winning class will come out tomorrow during Pep Rally, oh, which is awesome. pretty exciting because everyone looks forward to that. And so far, our class has won. We won last year. Last year. Yeah. So it's raised been a, a lot of money last year. If I a remember lot of money, and then the class gets half of that, which is very That's beneficial. So excellent. So you're seniors. No. Oh, we're, we're juniors. juniors. Ooh, yeah. yeah. So Great. Very count the pennies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Is that in the job description when you uh, um, run for student council that you have to oh, count? No. no, that just it's comes not. as a bonus. Yeah. That's a fine bonus. Yeah. It's fun though. We all work together. We just, I like it. So. Good well, that's good. But it's good. Yeah. Excellent. You're yeah. doing a lot of good things. That's yeah. Great. We're starting off the year on a, like a really high note. Yeah. Um, we're also uh, focusing a lot on like the school itself and getting the word out to what we're doing. So we've been putting a lot of posters up, and um, I know I. Uh, have a big share in like getting the word out to like uh, the media so I run like different accounts to make sure everyone's updated on the different events and like pep rally and uh, what we've been doing every day and uh, spirit week and how our class has been doing and it's just a fun way that everyone looks forward to when they go on their phone so yeah excellent well doing. you're very busy yeah. and hopefully you'll have a lot of fun tomorrow thank you yes. thank, thank you. you very much <laughs> and hopefully we'll see you in two weeks thank you so much okay thank, thank you girls thank you. Thank you. Yes. So, okay, so we will move into liaison reports and start with the athletic fields subcommittee. Do you want to um, give the highlights or you want me to do that? Um, you can do it if you want. I wasn't. All right, I'll do it and then you can I jump can in with in. all the things yeah. that I forgot. <laughs> so, first and foremost, we will be having a forum on October 18th, um, which is open to the public and information should be out there shortly, if not already. Um, that will be at the middle school at 7 o'clock. And you, in your packet, well, actually, not in the public packet, but we sent you all the preview of the um, presentation, which we're still developing. So mostly to make you aware of sort of where everything stands, but also if there's feedback that you have about the presentation or questions that you have about the presentation particularly, um, then you can send them along to me, and I'll make sure that those get answered and incorporated into the presentation we will post a meeting so that the entire school committee can be there um, and participating uh, additionally we had we went to the conservation commission monday night i think yeah, monday night um so uh, which was the hearing the first hearing on our notice of intent um related to getting the permitting so that we can move forward with the athletic fields um and so that went well. We did determine that there's a fee that we didn't expect, which you will see later under new business. Um, and then we have our first hearing with the um, CPC committee on October 12th. So we saw the grant at our last meeting that's been submitted and um, we've had some follow-up correspondence with them and we'll go to our first hearing with CPC on October 12th. And um, the work with Parks and Rec is ongoing in terms of the structure of the management of the fields and setting up the um, revolving funds for the um, maintenance and the replacement of the fields. So it's been a busy time. There's a lot happening with this right now. Um, this will continue to move forward at a pretty quick pace. Is there anything uh, I left out? The only thing I would add is the is from the CONCOM meeting. Um, not a surprise, but their main area of focus actually didn't have to do with this project. True. It had to do with the outstanding order of conditions from the field project that we determined was from 1998. Yes. Um, okay. So they um, they made it pretty clear again, not surprisingly, that they would like to see this that wrapped up as a part of the work on this project um, in order for this to go forward. So 
Um, we're going to continue keeping them <coughs> up to speed on our efforts there. We've already been working with, with Gale Associates to look at what needs to be done for that. Um, they did agree to a, um, I think in the original order of conditions, it was a one to two ratio for two, the two wet. Two to one. Two to one, right, yeah. two to one f to replace the, the wetlands, and they agreed to a one and a half to one. So that should help us a little bit in terms of cost and um, the work that's involved there. Um, but we'll continue, but that's going to have to be part of our um, budget and likely capital process for next for this coming town meeting as well. So there's a lot of dependencies for this field project between that, the revolving okay. account. There are many dominoes yes. in the equation. Okay, any questions? I, I thought that the presentation is excellent. Good. Good. Great. Thank you. So you're just looking that? forward to it. Word is definitely out. Oh, good. Lots of different EHOP and other. Great. Well, please yeah. share it, invite yeah. people, all those social media tools, use them so we can get people informed and up to speed. Um, okay, so I think that's it on that on that front. Um, community communications. Um, we met um, late last week, Dr. McLeod, myself, uh, Jean, who has also uh, joined us, and we had a wonderful representation from a cross section of the community and uh, also some parent organizations. And of course, we had uh, Mr. Bishop and Mr. Keller join us as well. Um, this was more geared towards a consultant that we are looking to hire from Visions, which helps with communications across the community, specifically in the area of diversity, but communication in general. Um, and the person who joined us was uh, Rick Pinderhues uh, from uh, Visions, who facilitated the discussion. And diversity of abilities religion, sexuality, race, in the face of rapid changes in the community and related issues. The readiness and need to address them were at the core of the discussion. Uh, we discussed if the problem is big and rampant enough to necessitate external help to begin with. Do we even need that? Um, we also talked about uh, folks who don't see it as a problem and how do we address in those instances. So from the beginning, you know, everybody came with a very different viewpoint, thoughts and whatnot, but towards the end, as uh, you know, towards the conclusion, the group as a whole came to a conclusion that irrespective of the size of the issue, we need to provide tools to our youth educators and parents to address the issues. And Rick advised us on how this can be done, giving us a glimpse of tools their organization offers. And one such suggestion was training the trainer model where we, uh, we can become self-sufficient more easily. And this is what the group was leaning towards. Uh, we all, this, there was also a discussion around giving legitimacy to this particular initiative across the town, and it was felt that if it is owned and promoted by schools, the school committee, the board of selectmen, the town manager, HPTA, CPAC, Youth Commission, and other town and community organizations, it will go a long way. So that was the thought process behind it, but it was a very good conversation where everybody opened up and shared their thoughts very freely. Uh, in terms of next steps, uh, we are looking forward to a proposal from Vision and a timeline for a rollout. We are also looking to identify parent liaisons, also youth leaders within the schools and other participants for the program, and endorsement from pertinent community, parent, and school organizations, including school committee. Uh, is there anything else that comes to your mind, Dr. McLeod? Money. <laughs> so of part of the endorsement and the shared responsibility around the initiative is once we've identified and followed up with the proposal sure. is coming back to the various uh, groups to share the cost of what it, of, of what it might be as well. Mm -hmm. So you'll be hearing more about it from us. And I guess, uh, you know, just to uh, also add to this is that we felt it's joint ownership. So we still have to see what the proposal would look like, right? And what we are looking for is kind of your thoughts on is it, do we all feel that this is needed? And have we all heard enough about, you know, some of the issues around diverse abilities or, uh, you know, uh, for instance, uh, from the CPAC, Marla Morosco put it very beautifully. She said, don't add some of you know our concerns or or the kids with special needs as an afterthought it should become the very fabric of our conversation of our thought process 
So um, that's where we're coming from. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions, comments? Okay. Okay. Um, and was there also something about tech you want to update us? Sure. Um, so Dr. Kavanaugh, Carol Kavanaugh, and myself, we went to this meeting in Walpole on September 22nd. It was an amazing experience. I highly recommend it to whoever would want to go, go for it next year. I felt very, very privileged to be part of that group of people. Also equally committed and passionate and uh, yet very, very experienced uh, in, in their specific areas and wanting to make a change and uh, make a difference in children's lives. So it was an amazing experience for me. Um, having said that, there was a lot on the agenda, and I learned along the way quite a bit. There was a financial report that was presented, and uh, for, uh, it was excellent news that they had 28% surplus. And uh, by law, they can only have up to 25% surplus. So anything that was in excess, uh, they decide, as a board, it was decided that instead of returning the f money back to each individual uh, com uh, school district, it be invested in something which all the school districts are interested in. And there were two programs that were identified. One was FUSE, which is in partnership with the Highlander Institute, which would provide professional development services to the member districts. And this would include an 18-month fellowship that will train an outstanding educator to be a leader and coach. And we need to identify that educator from our district as a nominee for this program. Um, there is another uh, uh, program for which the surplus is being invested in um, is the Student Data Privacy Alliance. This initiative is to improve capacity of member districts to protect the privacy of student data. Uh, we will also get access to training and support, including legal counsel. It is my understanding that this is something that our school district has already been ahead of the curve on. So even before tech initiative came in, uh, we have been using the services. So there, there should be some potential cost savings for us being part of tech, especially in the legal counsel area. Uh, besides that, uh, there were a few other things um, that happened. They have a new IT director, um, and they have added 12 new staff members on tech. And um, also there was a review of the DESI findings, which were um, nothing major. Uh, they were minor findings. And besides that, there's a new therapeutic pool, which has been open for kids. And it is uh, the naming ceremony is to happen uh, later this month. Excellent. Thank you. Um, were there any other liaison reports? Yes, do you have them? Last, just All right. No, go, go ahead. We don't have anything else. Then okay. I'll go really quickly just to say that we are awaiting anxiously, with bated breath, awaiting the schedule for our budget advisory group meetings, and those have not yet begun. Okay. Yes. I don't think there's anything else. So go ahead. So I was just going to give a brief um, update, but and then to segue into Dr. Zaleski's Excellent. report. Excellent. Why okay. don't you join us then, Dr. Yeah. Zaleski? Yeah. Thank you. <coughs> so the, the first one is that CPAC had its first meeting of the year. It felt like a decent turnout relative to some of the others and hopefully moving forward in some positive directions. Uh, but over the summer, as I have mentioned before, we did the, well, let me back up to April. We had the policy come before us for the ESY and we had looked at it and we decided not to take action because we wanted more feedback and to make sure we were meeting the needs of the parents and the students in the community. And so we had tr asked Dr. Zaleski to form a working group, really, uh, over the summer to come up with a handbook and guidelines for ESY, which uh, the, we met five or six times over the summer. We had a... Okay. Uh, time flies when you're having fun. <laughs> uh, but so, and that's the, what we worked on, and then we'll... Are we going to move the policy to yes, so we'll out do of that order to right do it right this. after we yeah. do the guidelines? So that's... Turn it over to you to... Excellent. It's okay. I mean, no, do I can't introduce it or? Oh, I can't ask. She's okay.
policy itself went out yes. by listserv and I, the, I know the guidelines were in the public packet. Did you receive any feedback? I received at all? zero emails on that topic. concerns that families bring up in relation to ESY and how can we best address those concerns in the confines of our handbook, um, which really would provide answers to a lot of the questions because we get a lot of phone calls. And, um, you know, in the team meeting process, parents ask a lot of questions and then we receive a lot of phone calls in, the, in my office and student services. So this will help answer a lot of those questions and provide some um, real good information for families. So we started with the mission statement and together we, um, we developed this mission statement. So I'll just read it for a moment. The mission of the extended school year program is to provide an environment where each student is challenged in an atmosphere that supports IEP service delivery and promotes continuous development in key areas as outlined in the IEP. We expect staff to optimize student growth by way of instructional planning and implementation throughout the program. It is our goal to collaborate fully with parents to ensure each student's ESY experience is productive. By setting high standards for each member of the ESY program, we continuously strive for excellence. And it was really exciting to put this together because all stakeholders came with um, different opportunities to give input, as well as we um, put opportunities by way of a member that was on the working group to elicit input from the community to put this together. So it was, it was really exciting and well thought out. So we divided this into sections. The first section really just addresses home and school collaboration and, you know, in the spirit of our mission to best collaborate with families. We put together um, each component of the paperwork that goes into preparing for ESY. Because a lot of the, what usually happens is when we send out our informational packet, it comes with a great deal of information. Oftentimes families can be confused and they're concerned about timelines and in our office then wonders, who's really going to attend the program, and we're trying to figure out how to staff it. So to eliminate all of that confusion, we put this together. And under, so under the parent communication section, we included sample informational brochures, the sample letter that goes out to um, families, and then the sample confirmation parents. It's really a checklist form where parents uh, let us know who's coming and for what weeks. And then these forms are required uh, in in our partnership with Accept Collaborative, provide transportation, we're giving, uh, we have to give school health form and information so we have up-to-date information on file to support student needs over the summer, and then transportation request form as to who's requiring transportation and who wants the transportation. So then we've set a deadline. We decided as a working group that May 1st made, made the most sense just so we had enough time to adequately plan with our organization as well as internally. And so with that, we looked at some protocols. So it says see transportation timelines, and so in a few moments you'll see that, so I'm not gonna click on that link. Um, we set some timelines very specifically for transportation, and then at the end of the program we mail a parent survey out, and all families get an end of the year ESY progress report as to how the students are doing. So I just wanna let you know that although at the end of the school year, end of the ESY program, we send the progress report out, but ongoing throughout the program, parents are collaborating with the educators. And we, we talked about that as a working group that, you know, we don't want to just make it so that it's end of the program so that ongoing they can ask questions, they can um, email folks, they can email the ESY coordinator or myself. So these are the timelines and families have been asking for this for quite some time so this just kind of nicely outlines what is our timeline. So. By late March, we will send out a brochure um, just explaining how the program works and some information. In April, parents of students requiring ESY services 
uh, will be mailed the packets by the end of April, no later, and then the transportation forms will be included. So positions, this aligns with our contractual obligations. Positions for program instruction, instructors and staff will be posted by the end of April. Families ask, you know, about hiring, you know, because they want to know as soon as possible who will be servicing their child, but really hiring timelines is dependent on the ongoing applicant pool because we want to make sure we have highly qualified staff in place over the summer. So we work that through. And then um, we set, set it so that in May, all the documentation will go to the ESY coordinator. Currently, currently Dan Mazur is serving as our ESY coordinator and he has signed on for another year, so we're very grateful for that. He did a great job this past summer. And in June, um, we always hold a parent information night. And at that time, we go over all of these components and then we also will hand out instructional plans. So for the community who may be watching, um, the instructional plans is an opportunity to take the, IE, the existing IEP and then match it to um, the instructional interventions. And they set specific plans for the students. So the faculty who are teaching in ESY have a real great understanding of what needs to be taught, rather than just picking up an IEP and trying to make sense of what instructional strategies need to be utilized. So this is really a great opportunity for some you know, high quality instruction during the summer program. We talked as a working group about, you know, one of the concerns parents had was, you know, who is the chain of command? And what do we what do we do if we have a question? So we outline this, that uh, it begins with the ESY coordinator, and during the program, this ultimately is the chain. It begins with the ESY teacher, the coordinator, and then ultimately my office um, will field the phone calls to help any anybody who couldn't get their questions answered at those levels. Talk about pick up and drop off procedures. Um, and this was interesting. The reason that we did this is we realized I actually had the opportunity on the first day of ESY when I'm outside and greeting everybody and saying hello. Parents did have a lot of questions like, oh my gosh, do I go in the back door, the front door? Where do I drop my child off? And we talked about as a group if this was a concern for, for the majority, and it, they agreed it was. They just needed better clarity on where to go. So, um, you know, we're just clarifying here that adults are stationed outside to greet the students and guide them to the designated entrances. Maps will be provided to the families when the ESY packets are sent out, so this is something new that we're going to work on. Um, so that way folks have exact clarity of what entrance to go in and, um, you know, know exactly what location. Because it's not as easy as during the school year we can just walk in the front door. Just because of limited staffing over the summer and also location of the program, Oftentimes, the program is located maybe in the back of the building, and you might have to enter in a different different entrance. So this will definitely help as we plan our um, locations each summer. We put this in here, um, that it's critical to pick up your child on time, um, although we recognize circumstances may prevent a timely pickup. So we thought it was important to put, put in that to, to contact the student service office, because in the unlikely event a parent is stuck in traffic or they're having a difficult time getting to the school on time. We want to make sure everybody feels safe and supported while we're trying to get children to and from where they need to be. Um, and then we also put that if the vans are running late more than 15 minutes, teachers would contact families to inform them that the child may be home or dropped off to the destination late. Because just like parents, the, except collaborative vans may have difficulty with traffic or other unforeseen circumstances. So we wanted to make sure we had something in there so people felt safe as to how they would be communicated in the event that occurred over the summer. So section two is the transportation guidelines. Um, and it aligns with the, the timelines we already reviewed of uh, you know, the April and May timelines for transportation and returning all the documentation. And by June 15th, Accept has agreed to have routes established and will communicate with parents um, regarding pickup and drop off. ESY transportation, this, so we had a lot of consultation last year in terms of are our families able to have transportation or are they not able to have transportation? The difficulty with ESY transportation is there is a special education entitlement that's attached to it in the IEP based on the child's disability. So there was a lot of confusion around that. So after spending a lot of time discussing it as a CPAC group and then consulting with our legal counsel, we were given the, the final advisory and ruling on this, which is really positive that um, our district will indiv individually assess the facts of each student's case to determine whether in the absence of providing ex uh, transportation to extended school year services, 
the student would be unable to access the services on the IEP. If that were the case, then we will provide transportation. So that's really positive because as you see in the last statement, it says this is regardless of whether the IEP team determines that a student requires it as a related service. Mm -hmm. so for those of you that are not familiar with this process, there was a little checkbox on the IEP that says yes, it's required or no, it's required. And where the confusion came in is if the box doesn't get check checked off, you're not entitled to the transportation. Well, yes, that's true as a related service based on the disability. However, if families cannot get their children to the program because of other hardships, what this advisory is doing is saying, we will definitely take that into consideration. It will be case by case. And that's good news because it falls outside the guidelines of what we're required to follow in the IEP, and it gives us the flexibility to support families in getting to and from the program. So we're pretty excited about that. Camping and rec recreational program, this just comes from the guidance that we get from the Department of Ed, that um, camping or recreational programs provided solely for recreational purposes and with no <coughs> IP goals um, shall not be considered extended year programs. However, the exciting part about this work is we decided as a group that although we recognize we can't send children to camp as part of ESY, we did determine the value in enhancing social opportunities for students in the summer and um, a working group has been formulated that's gonna be looking at and examining what, how can we work on the best experiences to provide some opportunities like this for students. Um, so that working group is happening and Nancy Cavanaugh is part of that group. In addition, internally in my department, a group has been formulated to analyze how to best enhance social skills for students in the summer. And we're looking at uh, embedding some field trips and things that are related to uh, ESY that are going to best meet the students' needs in this area. Section 4 just reviews our current program descriptions as it, as it is in its current form. At this time and over the summer, we didn't make a determination to reconfigure the program um, because we have other components to examine, like the camping and the social skills, to make a determination whether or not we'd need to extend these programs or do anything differently. So just as a quick review, we have our 18 to 22 program intact for students, and it runs up to five hours a day, five days per week. Students are mostly out in the field in this program, working at vocational sites. We have a five-week moderate program, which is a pre-K to 12 program, dealing with um, you know, various components of the content areas, and it, it does allow social opportunities throughout the program itself, not off-site per se. And then we do have our six-week intensive program, which is intact for our more intensive needs students. And, um, you know, we put this note at the bottom of our program descriptions that individual determination of the number of weeks, days per week, and minutes are based on each student's needs. The reason we agreed as a group to put that note in is one of the questions that came up from families is, well, geez, if it's a five-week or a six-week program, it's very cookie-cut, it doesn't feel individualized. So we talked about it as a group that it is individualized because Although this is, these are the basic guidelines for the district in terms of how our programs are operating, if you have a student, if we have a student and we've done this and we always do this, who has a need and it goes beyond these program hours, we'll service that need. Uh, whether it's through hiring faculty for longer periods of time or through related service providers, meaning OTPT speech. Um, and we do that ongoing. So families wanted to feel comfortable that that was in there so that they know that there's flexibility and they don't have to feel like they can't ask for anything more than what's being offered as a general rule. Section five we'll save for later, because that's under a different section of tonight's meeting, which is the ESY policy, which um, we wanted to have this embedded in our handbook, but again, it's pending school committee approval, so we couldn't do anything more with it until it's approved. And this is a fun section. We talked about commonly asked questions. Um, so these are some of the things that parents came up with, and this, this came by way of parents emailing and writing in um, to folks that were on the committee and giving us some, some things that they want to advance and it helped us formulate 10 questions. So just to very quickly go through, who will parents re receive the ESY progress reports? And then you know, the answer is within the timeline we discussed. Will transportation be provided, which is a common question. The answer is ESY decisions are individualized and we refer them back to the transportation section. Will the child's ESY program be tailored to his or her needs? The answer is yes. That alleviates and calms any anxieties families might have about asking for the service. How often will I be notified regarding my child's progress? Which talks, um, what I spoke about earlier, that families will be communicated with on a weekly basis unless specified 
on a more frequent basis on the IEP, which often does happen. Sometimes the IEP will call for daily communication, specifically for students that may be nonverbal and we have communication logs. So we wanted to put that in there because we felt it really important so parents don't feel like this is um, a really strict guideline that only once a week you'll get notification. So we wanted that flexibility. And then we also put in there that we're available on an ongoing basis. And then number five, what point will the district decide whether or not the child's eligible? So typically, as a rule, it's discussed at the annual IEP meeting and be, because we collect data throughout the year to determine the need. However, that's not to say, because some of the families were asking me during this committee, well, what happens if it's you know, March and my annual is not up until the end of June and I want to you know, have this, this service? We're completely flexible with that. Parents really throughout the year can ask for this service. And if, if we see an immediate need and we know based on prior data, even if they're coming in from another district, we take that under advisement and consideration. Um, so again, this is just a guideline, which is why we call it a handbook and guidelines, but it's not, it's not so rigid that we can't go outside of that, and we typically do. And are the programs providing the least restrictive environment? Yes, we want students to be able to have the opportunity to engage as much as possible with as many peers as possible during the program. And the criteria for eligibility is, and this will be outlined when we look at the policy a little bit later on, it does explain the criteria. Um, that, that really just aligns to the eligibility. And then what should my child bring to ESY, which is really important because believe it or not, we get a really lot of phone calls and emails about this. Is, can I bring a snack? It's going to be 90 today. Can I bring juice? So the answer is your child should definitely bring snacks and water and lunch if, if applicable, if they're going to be there or if they have a need where they, they need to have a snack in the morning. Um, and then we also put in sunscreen because it gets hot and kids go outside and they want to play, so we want to make sure that they're safe. And then finally, who do I have contact if my child's later absent due to illness? And parents are going to be provided with a call-in number for the ESY nurse to contact. This was really important because oftentimes what happens, depending on who's working at the front desk, the phones might ring and ring and ring, and some families brought that up as a concern that, geez, who do we call? Like the phone was ringing and um, someone may be on vacation, a secretarial support staff. So they're going to be provided with the direct contact of the nurse, and, and then our, our office will be the backup, because typically we usually have the cellular numbers of those folks as well. So that way people can have constant contact. So that's the work that we did this summer. Ooh. Stay tuned for the policy. Wow. Any questions? That's a lot of work. Oh, thank you. A lot of work. Um, so, so what was the feedback? I'm sure you must have shared it with the parents uh, from the CPAC community, so just wondering. Uh, what was their feedback like? So the feedback on this, is, I, I think my understanding, and Nancy, you can correct me if I'm wrong, based on our last meeting, we didn't spend a lot of time talking about it, but we, they were very happy that a guideline was going to be put out for families. I think that folks are feeling like this is going to streamline a lot of those unanswered questions that they've had for a few years, and ranging from the simplest things as, do I bring a snack, to the more complex issues of transportation and what's my entitlements, because that can cause a lot of upset during the IEP process. So. My overall takeaway, Nancy, was I, I think this is very positive in terms of the feedback and, and looking forward to see how it's going to be implemented. Is that your feeling as well? I, I didn't receive a lot of feedback outside of what was right. in the meeting, which generally is a good thing. Right. Uh, well, I, I like feedback. I don't mean it that way, but just I think <laughs> when people have an issue, they tend to bring it forward if they're more okay with the handbook. I do think the other point that you had brought up at the end of the when our, our final meeting was that you and you have a little group of people from your department that are examining the program itself, right. which I think is in looking at what would be helpful. And I think what's great about that, we also did get some write-in feedback. A parent um, or two wrote in to me and thanked us for the work that we did and felt like it was moving in a positive direction. So that was really great um, to inform our budget process too. The work that we're doing right now with this internal working committee. Um, we're determining whether or not we're going to put in social activities like field trips and things of that nature. And that work is actively going on right now because we're in budget season so that, you know, we're hoping to have some answers sooner rather than later about what we can further do to enhance our programming on that end. I mean, you know, you have clearly thought through so much here down to, you know, the FAQs and, you know, what, uh, knowing some of the issues in the summer with the staff, the limited staff that you must be working off of. So it clearly comes across as something well thought through. Oh, thank you so much. And the committee worked hard. I mean, we had a committee of um, 
it's up to 10. People fluctuated in and out depending on their vacations, but um, everybody worked very collaboratively together, and we spent a great deal of time just talking about it through the concerns. And like I said, we did have the opportunity for parent feedback from the greater community too, not just the working group, okay. which I found very powerful and helpful, especially when we deal with the mission and the frequently asked questions section. Because really, we said to families, this is your guideline, so I need to know the concerns from the families as to what you want in here, because it's your book. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I think this, didn't this, the guidelines also go out to the all of the special ed parents over the summer before we wrapped up our group? Yes, so we did. We sent out a memo through, I think it was through School Messenger, right. um, just to ask for some feedback and um, to for final input before we had our last meeting. So we did that. And so, like I said, it was collaborative both internally with the working group and then for the greater community at large, which, you know, the end product is really the hard work of the families and everybody's input in the community as well. So they're to be equally thanked. Well, it was clearly responsive to the gap that we heard about at the CPAC meeting last spring. So I think yeah. they, they were yeah. really looking for a resource to, yeah. to have information. So I think it, it's great work. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, I agree. I think every question or every topic of discussion that we had last spring is absolutely answered in here. So this will be a great tool, probably a time saver for you, yes. as well as um, a stress reliever for the families, which is fantastic. Um, and, you know, I, I think the fact that it did go out and we got no questions is a credit to the depth of the work that you did and the breadth of the you know net that you cast in doing it so um yeah so i think that sounds sounds really well done so please say thank you to everybody from the working group that spent their <laughs> summer 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 sundays in the office with you doing this we did have pizza <laughs> and we had some baked goods, so we made it fun. All right. <laughs> so, we also made sure that there were multiple invitations, but we made sure that the CPAC board knew that this was going to be presented tonight. Um, and, and most recently this week, I, I did ask Megan to make sure that they were reminded that it was on the agenda. Um, because this originated with you, where you had asked um, Dr. Zaleski to, to work with Nancy. And, and um, at a meeting back last spring, where we said we will bring it, we, Dr. Zaleski, will bring the report back to you, the result of all the work, um, and we'll make sure that we reach out to the CPAC board to make sure that, you know, you're, you're there. So I think that's another testament um, to, to the communication that you've done, Dr. Zaleski, and, and the way in which you've shared the document, that this is not a surprise to anybody. People have had a chance to review it, to provide feedback um, before tonight. Yep. Thank you. And we do you want to move the policy discussion? That would be out great now? if okay. you don't mind. Yeah. So, unless, yeah, you can if stay. there are no other questions, does anybody object to moving old business um, 6A, A, yep. extended school year up That's now right. so we can discuss it while Dr. So Dr. Zaleski doesn't have to stay here for another hour and a half? She can if she wants. She's, She's welcome, welcome to, to but she won't feel policies. obligated. Um, I, don't, I don't like the lack of optimism that it would take an hour and a half. <laughs> no, the, the I'm just going by the going to really impress you tonight, aren't we? <laughs> um, yes, very much so. Okay, so yes, yeah, so I why can, don't we do I that? Set this off if you like. Yep, okay. Start us off. So I'll just get you started to remind the committee that we, are, basically, you had received a question from a community member about the extended school year policy. And our hardworking policy committee um, discovered that we did not have an extended year school year policy so the policy that's in your packet and that has been redlined um, for your consideration is actually um, MASC's policy mm -hmm. that the committee has looked at worked with Dr. Zaleski you have shared it with the committee that worked the ESY committee in the summer so there's been a lot of eyes on this to to say that that this represents the procedural um, represents the way that in which we interpret and the, and meets the, our needs within the community. Um, so what you've had had in your packet, and the reason it's old business is that when we first brought it up, it had yet to be shared, correct, with the ESY committee. Is that why it's old business? It, it correct. It had not been out through the right. committee, and that correct. we wanted to make sure. Okay. We could. Were there any were, were there any questions? I did you? not receive any Spiritual. email about that. So. Um, I take that as a good sign. And Dr. Zaleski, I think you also vetted this with our legal team. 
I did. Yep. Actually, the suggestion, when we were meeting as a committee, um, the, the group had suggested that we, you know, put, put another layer of eyes on this, which I thought made really good sense, just to make sure we're aligning it with regulations, because ESY really is heavy laden with regulations. Both federal and state statutes govern how we have to operate ESY, so we just want to make sure that we were on target, and the good news is our legal counsel came back with just a couple of word changes. And it really wasn't anything major structurally that needed to be changed. So that was a real positive. So I feel like we're on track. Does anybody, anybody have questions or comments about the policy? I do not. No. I have, I have two, I have three questions um, that are just small, but this, you, you know, this is how I roll. Um, I, sometimes we use student and sometimes we use child. And I don't know if that's intentional and it means something different or or if there's any value to having that be standardized? To me, it is no different. I mean, I, th I this really comes from, so the, the, the interchange of those two words, student versus child, comes from our legal counsel's advice. Okay. I, I honestly don't think there's any, because um, I know the legal language of the, the regulation, she's just aligning it with that. Okay. And if we as a district decide to change it from students rated for Rated the child's rated I don't think it's going to cause any harm if no, you want it to be I'm, consistent. Yeah, I'm not going to substitute my judgment for okay. our attorney. I just was curious as to why it was sometimes. But it, it does stand out, Jean, in that in number three because it's been crossed out. Right. The word student, and then later on refers to student in the same, right. in the insert. Right. So it's curious. Right. That's what. That's when it first caught my right. eye, and then and then it refers to the child in the end of the fifth. It's the right. only one it's crossed out as well. All the other numbers, all the other have student in them. Right. Except in number five. Number five, it has child. Maybe because they didn't want to use the same, right. you know. That's how it appears. <laughs> the it the appear? same time. That's a good point. That's what I would think. Mm -hmm. Because in every policy or every document, I think we use child and student interchangeably. Okay. Right? Yeah. We do, but we usually stick with one or the other right. throughout the policy. That's why it, it jumped out at me. So I think I think you could make a suggestion in which way, whichever way you think, even though I legal has looked at it. It's most often written as student. Yes, in, it is. In this context, so. It feels like given that it is a school policy, referring to them as students as a default feels like the right way to go. I think okay. so. All right, so I only saw it in number three okay. and number five. Does that, did anybody else see it anywhere else? It's also in the policy that ESY is generally discussed and determined at each child's annual IEP meeting. Okay. Uh, can you show us where? The little paragraph oh, right here. Oh, the, the, below the below bullet. The bullet. <coughs> got it. Oh, right, got it. Okay. Good catch. So we will change every reference to child to student, correct? Is that what I'm hearing? And then my only other questions, I know in the handbook I saw reference to the CMR, the appropriate CMR, but I don't know if we should be listing that in the grid at the bottom in the legal references. And then we just have that box for procedure reference I thought might be a good place to put the link for the handbook. Yeah, agree. So those were the only two other things that I, w I wanted to suggest. That's great. And in she fact, that's established. Okay. She doesn't. But in I, fact, that's I why guess. we took up the, gui the guidelines before this was so that we could... It would make sense. Okay, very good. So, you, so I don't know ex the exact CMR references, but if we can fill those in, Dr. Zaleski will get those. I to know us. you know them. Okay, okay. <laughs> great. Um, anything else? So, are we comfortable approving the policy now? I'm not bringing it back the next time. <laughs> My question to you. Ms. Birchman, is given that it's our first time taking up this policy, are we approving or adopting? I believe we would be approving. Oh, well, no. that's... Approving and adopting. So under our grid... I get you. Right? Adopting. I think we're adopting. Ado I believe you're we correct. approving the adoption of... We are. <laughs> there we go. So... But we don't often take up brand new policy, which is why I asked right. the question. Right. Okay. So... Probably what I'm hearing you say mm -hmm. is that I'm looking for a motion to approve adoption of policy IHBB extended school year as amended. Mm -hmm. So moved. And second. Second. Okay. So a, mo a motion by Mr. Graziano, a second by Ms. Barreth. Any, all in favor? Yes. yes. Any opposed or abstained? 
So that is unanimous. Thank you very much Thank for you your work. Um, we really appreciate it. And you're very welcome to stay and listen to the rest of our meeting. <laughs> good stuff. As fun as we are. We don't expect. You like that policy. Where do you see what's coming up? That's right. We get a lot more. Budget transfers. My name is next to bullying, Dr. That was, oh, okay. that was um, only because you. I wanted to just reference that you brought it to my attention and that we'll be bringing you back once we're ready to make the amendments. Tonight we are only appointing a committee. So, Dr. Zaleski, um, off the hook. I would encourage that. you to hit the road. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank, thank you very you. much. Good night. Thank you for you. all of your work on this and for coming here. On oh, a, I'm sure you, you have a long day. Thank you for collaborating and helping us formulate the committee and, and for bringing the great food that you did this summer. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. 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 I have a very brief chair report. Um, the only email correspondence I received uh, since our last meeting was the one regarding the trail. Um, I did have an email with some questions around our special education program and a call from one of our state legislators on that topic, um, both of which I've referred to Dr. McLeod. Um, Dr. McLeod and I did have a meeting with ClearGov this week, and we will be putting that on the agenda for our October 19th meeting. They are, um, they have a contract with the town and are interested in having a contract with the school district as well, so we'll have some time in our next meeting to have a short presentation and a discussion about that. Um, and I, be I believe, other than updating you about the warrants, we moved to our new system of warrant approval. So I did approve warrants. Um, actually Monday and I will be going in again tomorrow um, and then you'll be continuing to get the warrants in your packet so that process is underway um, and then the final uh, topic in my report is just an update on the superintendent search and a reminder to the many people in the community who are watching our meeting right now that the applications for um, members of the public to participate either as a parent or just a general member of the public are due tomorrow um, and then following that, Mina and Nancy will review the applications and make the recommendation to the rest of us. And so at our October 19th meeting, we will have the full slate of uh, screening committee members that we can vote on and then we'll continue to move forward. Our, um, our notice has definitely been posted and I believe interest is starting to build. So we will, I'm sure we'll have a great set of candidates to, to choose from. And I think that's all that I have, so I will turn it over to you. My uh, report is also brief, uh, mainly because the, our student representatives took <laughs> some of my points that I was going to speak about tonight. But, you know, I really will also echo um, our students' comment. I think it was, um, I think it was uh, Celia who said, we've started the year on a high note. That's really what I want to say to you tonight, is that the, the pace the energy, the excitement for learning that you feel in every building that you walk into. We really have had an excellent, excellent beginning to the school year. Just so positive. Um, and, and I just want to echo that thought that we really have started on a high note. And another high note for that is that we are beginning very much entrenched in the budget planning process, um, which will be another high note. As you already pointed out, the change in the um, payment of the accounts, the payable warrants, um, working with Susan and the problem-solving approach that she takes to everything but has extended to budget budget planning. And next at the next meeting, um, I'm just going to pique your interest to let you know that there's going to be a couple of very interesting proposals that she will be presenting to you um, in the form of report as we begin our work together. And um, so those are really the highlights. I, I always try to talk with you about the things that we're really focusing, that the focus of the work is on. Um, and so learning, awesome. <laughs> and um, budget planning would be the two really things that we're prioritizing right now. Excellent. Thank you. Now I'll show up next time. <laughs> 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 OK. Um, so moving on to new business, and anybody has questions, we'll move on to new business A. Um, budget transfers. So do you want to walk us through the transfers that Absolutely. we're approving? Um, so what you have before you are five budget transfers. 
The first one really is just cleaning up the ESY budgets. As you know, we estimate um, based on the students that are signed up for ESY um, and various things happen. You plan for hiring, being able to hire your own staff to provide those services. Sometimes you have interest, sometimes you don't. So what you see here really is just cleaning up some of those accounts that ran a little bit over. Um, contracted service mostly was because of not being able to hire for a specific service for ESY students. So we contracted that out as opposed to using our own staff. Um, and then the para salary ran under budget while those others ran over budget. So that, that really is something that you see every year. Um, the second one, this really is, is kind of um, a piece to what Dr. McLeod was talking about in terms of budget planning. We've had several changes in, in student needs, and so you really see that reflected in these um, out-of-district tuitions. So our prepayment of special education transportation is um, somewhat saving us, <coughs> excuse me, if you will, in covering these um, changing student needs. So what you see, these are uh, changes that have happened for both the private out-of-district tuitions and the collaborative out of district tuitions. And again, unanticipated, so unbudgeted. The third one uh, was presented to you in a previous meeting, and that was the need to uh, hire an additional ELL teacher. Dr. Kavanaugh had um, presented that at an earlier meeting with the understanding that this prepaid transportation would be how we would cover that. The next one is extraordinary maintenance. This was actually an interesting um, piece that happened over the summer, Verizon as a company has been going around and replacing their copper to fiber, which is a decision they've made as a company. But what that has um, come to us is it has interfered with our fire <coughs> alarm panels in the communication back to central alarm that we have, that we have you know, the, that the panel has gone off. So we've had to put in this radio signal tower as opposed to a upgrading your fire alarm panel. So this is a, a means to uh, get that panel to operate properly. Again, un unanticipated, this company moved by Verizon, but we have to uh, get our panels to operate. And the last one is just a very simple, as you know, at the end of the year, we estimate our utilities that will happen in June. And this one just came in a little higher than the estimate. So are there any questions on those transfers? Anybody have questions? I have a couple questions. They're very quick. First, that's just a huge bummer that that was at Center School. The, it's, you know, like huge. really one they <coughs> in the summer. That's I, was, I was just wondering if we can, <clears throat> do, do, can we char charge that back if it ends up being used for a town asset. <laughs> <rather> yeah, than... <laughs> so, I mean, right now you see Center School, you're actually going to see a few more. Okay. So, but, but still... this one, we had no budget for extraordinary maintenance at Center right. School. Right because we were trying not to touch the school. So, yeah, that but, is th but we did run into this in several different buildings. Okay. Um, and then just my question, you know, given the staff that we've already added this year and it's only October 5th, um, you know, we're, we always are so careful to prepay SPED tuition or, or um, transportation to allow us to absorb that. But I'm just wondering, you know, are you feeling like, we're so comfortable to go through the rest of the year. We've just, we've made a bigger dip into that pool than we typically have by this point. Um, well, one of the things that will um, be coming, uh, uh, the lane changes uh, deadline okay, is, is drawing near. So as of right now, we won't know who um, have those unearned lane changes. So in another couple weeks, we'll be able to see where that falls in terms of, you know, the salary and, and uh, where we're falling with that. Um, hopefully we don't have any more unanticipated need for staff during this year. Right. Um, but I do caution, there are a lot of wants and asks against the budget. So for that, I do caution because we have had a lot of unanticipated need dipping into that prepayment. It will lessen our ability to prepay anything in the next year, right. which again, always 
as, as it gets tighter and tighter becomes more and more challenging for those unanticipated needs that you're not ready for. Um, so, you know, that's just kind of a broad caution. Um, obviously, we do that with, with the staff, but, you know, as the community is, is bringing forward asks to you, it, you can see where that challenge is that is becoming more and more difficult. So, Ms. Bridgman, sorry, can I just make one comment? Um, so, maybe a little bit to a follow-on to the praise that Dr. McLeod was heaping on you, but uh, th this is a different way than we normally do the budget, or have done the budget transfers in the past. Um, and I just want to say I really like it. Um, in, in the past, we've done more of uh, what I call, a, but for lack of a better term, a lumping approach, where we sort of pump all of the extra money into salary reserve and then at the end of the year do a whole series of them to true this up. I think this is going to give us, as a committee, great visibility into what's actually happening at the line item level. So to your question about are we potentially dipping too far into this prepayment is a line of sight that I think is going to be really helpful for us as we go into budget planning and also manage the budget throughout the year. So I just wanted to say I'm, I'm, I really like this format and process the way we're doing it. So, and, I, and I'll jump on, so you will steal, still see that truing up of, of right. the salaries once we've, we know who is changing lanes and who is not. Um, so we will still be doing that at, at some point. No, I understand, but we used to use it as like the main lever where all extra money used to go in there and then we used to I see. allocate it out as we needed it. So that this is more line to line, which I think is, is going to help us with that visibility. So. Anybody else? No. Okay. I don't know what it looked like before, but it makes perfect sense now. So, <laughs> there you go. That's great. Before we move on, are you about to move on? Um, I was going to have a, a vote. Oh, sorry. That's sorry, okay. I do, do that all the time. Do you have that? I is just, that I just, that's, it is. Ahead. And yeah. I, I didn't know if, if, Susan, you just, you know, wanted to make a comment on the, the report that follows. Yeah, briefly. so what, um, what I was going to say, it, you know, if you wanted to vote on the budget transfers, and then what I was going to do was kind of walk you through a little bit of the of the Munis report, but we can do that now. Um, so the the Munis report again, I think I recognize that this is not something that you've seen before, Correct. and this John gets to your point in terms of exactly the the, the line item uh, detail that is available. Um, so my proposal to you is that this, this is something that I can be presenting to you uh, on a monthly basis. Um, basically, if you look at the report, just to read across the, the top column, um, the original appropriation is what school committee vote, that is your budget that has passed at town meeting, if you will. The transfers and adjustments at this point in time only represents your carryover open encumbrances. So things that were still open June 30th, the purchase order carries over, and the expense you'll also see within here. So that's why that transfer um, is different, because you technically haven't done any transfers yet. All right. So what that does is that increases your budget, but it also increases your year-to-date expense, because you're spending what was encumbered at the end of the year. Okay. So your year-to-date expended, and then your encumbrances, that's the encumbrances that have been done um, to date, and the available bu budget and the percent used, if you will. So you can see running through these lines, um, you know, to a degree where you are, and you'll come to a page where, or a, a point where you see there is a negative uh, available budget. Those are some of the transfers that we did this evening. So the next time you see that, see this budget, they will not be zero anymore because we will execute that transfer, okay? So th some of the things to keep in mind, um, as you look at the percentage used, things such as supplies can be all bought in the beginning of the year or they can be bought throughout the year. So it's hard to determine exactly what that percentage used should be. Mm -hmm. But something such as your license, technology license, it's a one-time purchase, so that budget could be 100% done. So there is a reason for that. Okay? And salaries, of course, will be among the... We don't want to see that 100% done in October. Not now. <laughs> right, okay. So, um, so this is just, you know, a report that we can, I can be presenting to you on a, on a monthly basis. 
Uh, it gives you an explanation. It gives you your line items. You can see exactly what's going on. And if you have any questions, you can always let me know. Yeah, I think this is great. This is definitely, I mean, we haven't seen this level of detail on that regular basis. It's very user friendly, too. For it is, especially the percentage column. No, I'm glad you're comfortable easy. with it because sometimes it is intimidating. Yeah, but I also like, I mean, you know, I, I, I suspect that possibly people in the public don't make a regular habit of reading <coughs> our packets, but the fact that this is available to them, should they, yeah. should they choose to access it, is just a whole level of transparency yeah. that we've not had before. So I think this is great. Um, I'd agree with that. I, yeah. I just love the Muni report. It gives you the right buckets that we are interested in looking at. Uh, whereas looking at the codes and every little detail, that can be very painful and you get a lot more questions right. on what is this versus what is that. Whereas now we know which bucket uh, it belongs to. I find it extremely helpful. Thank and, you. And Thank the, you the other piece it. too, as you know, you know, your warrants have the account numbers if you really wanted to look and see what that meant. Now you have something you can refer back to. Right, right, yep, yeah, that's very helpful too. Any other questions or comments? Okay, good. Okay, then I think we're ready for a motion to approve the budget transfers as outlined in the agenda materials. So moved. And a second? Second. Okay, and all in favor? Yes. 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 Anybody opposed or abstained? Okay, so that's unanimous. Sorry, that was a motion by Mina and a second by Jen. Um, so thank you very much. That was excellent. Uh, so so I, I'm hearing that, yes, you would like this format on a monthly basis? Yes. yes. And, as long as you're comfortable okay, explaining a lot to us, because with the point you made about the percentages and what's going to be expended, I could see us having a lot of questions about those early on, but we'll learn. Well, and on, and on that point, just as a reminder, if we can get our questions in by Tuesday, it helps them Greatly be prepared to, yeah. to answer um, efficiently so we're not doing the group edit. Well, and anybody, that's the other thing, as you know, that people are always more than willing to have, you know, meetings as well to, to help people with the details if necessary. Um, but if it would be okay, it, it seems like the appropriate moment to ask you um, as Susan is planning, it, because it relates to reports, um, every year we kind of do the budget a little bit differently in terms of what we provide to the school committee as far as documents are concerned. And um, the conversation that we had just prior to the meeting was, you know, we can provide you with whatever format you like and it doesn't have to be that you all want the same for format. So we were wanting to just get, get a sense of, you know, do you like having a binder so that you can write all over it? Um, are you more comfortable with, you know, the, the uh, just getting the copy that is presented on, you know, as part of the packet? What? Um, I like the binder that organized it. Yep. I love the binder. I know you love the binder. I already knew I that. like the binder, <laughs> too. I know John is not a binder guy. I'm a binder person. Binder. My question is, if, if we have this, this isn't manipulative. You can't do anything with it, really, right? It's just visual. So, yeah, so I guess I would rather have the binder, too, just to have All right, and there. so just so you know, and John, I'm sorry, binder? No, I'm good. No. You're good. Yeah. So, um, and then we'll, we'll have some extras for our guests. But, of course, the binder is a living, changing document. Right. And so one of the things that gets a little bit sticky when we have multiple copies of that flying around is that it doesn't really represent the changing nature um, of that document, whereas, you know, the, the, right. And so as long as people get that and understand that from week to week, what you have in that binder based on your feedback to us will be changing, um, then we're happy to do it that way. But format-wise, mm -hmm. it'll still be the we'll, memo yep. with a report that I would imagine format would look similar change. to the one we've had before. Correct. Okay. All right. Yep. And okay. we'll, still, we'll, go, we'll still go with the practice of posting the the memo and the backup on our website so people in the public can. Right, and we've, uh, we, yeah, we've Megan, to a good Megan start with has that. prepared that so that we're all set with that. Yes, so yes. Okay. Okay, thank Excellent. you for that feedback. Thank Great. You. I can tell you, this is, I mean, you've been building this up. I think this is the most excited we've been for a budget process in the <laughs> six years I've been on the That's committee. True. So like uh, it's going to be, yeah, people, <laughs> people really should show up, it sounds like. <laughs> They, they, they do like a network show, the little cliffhanger yeah. of show up for the new right. announcement. What's budgets during sweeps week? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. 
Say people aren't going to show up. Okay. All right. So are we ready to move on to school committee policy EBC? Can introduce this for yes. us? Get, let me get caught up. Sure. Why am I in GIC? Uh, Safety and security. Well, I, I'm flipping through my binder and trying to find the right spot, but I don't need to because I can speak to it and just want to thank the, um, yeah, please, thank you. The uh, working group, um, you know, again, one doesn't often think about the fact that you can have fun working on policy, but um, <laughs> we do enjoy working with each other, and we did meet today um, for a couple of hours, and um, we discuss the fact that our job is to review policy and come to you with our recommendations having spent time reviewing it so that we don't have to spend um, th the idea is that of course there's there's questions and discussion that, but we'll key it up for you and in this respect the reason we were taking up uh, school safety and security is that the discussion the, the conversation happened as to whether given that we are so widely trained in, in the Alice protocol if she if we should be referencing that um, as part of school safety and security. In our discussion, uh, our recent discussion, as recently as today, we talked about the fact that, you know, there are other procedures that we use, um, ICS for one, incident command system, that we are widely also trained on within the district, um, which is really not typical um, for, for most towns, as I'm told from the police and fire department. So it seemed like calling out a specific procedure within the policy was kind of going away from the direction that we've been taking with mm -hmm. our policy work and however our work has been periodic review and so in periodically in reviewing EBC um, my recommendation and the, and the recommendation of the working group is that there there are no amendments um, at this time and that although we did discuss um, whether or not to specifically call out Alice we we agreed um, mm. that we did not want to make that recommendation. However, we are certainly open to your input. So that's where we are with it. Is that mm -hmm. want to yeah. add? Well, some did, no. Okay. Yep. Perfect. There you go. Thank, Thank you. you. So, um, <coughs> so I, I'm, I'm in agreement with the not naming specific procedures for a a host of reasons, but so I, th I think I, I move on from that. But um, I say this with the caveat that I don't think it's a big enough deal that if we're basically saying we don't need to crack open this policy right now, I'm okay with that. But I was, I was, um, the the piece where it says diagrams of school facility interiors will not be made public. Given the current environment in which we live and thinking back to some discussions that occurred a couple of years ago during the budget cycle where we were doing some capital articles related to this and it became an issue of discussion of details at public meetings, I'm wondering if we should put something in the policy about where it, that talks about that discussion of specific safety and security protocols um, are not, you know, the, basically that they're executive session discussions and that they're not discussions that will be held in an open and public mm -hmm. meeting. Because mm -hmm. um, I, I think it, it is something that we've always, we've always done pretty well at, yes. um, but I, I think it might be worth codifying in a policy. Mm -hmm. Again, I'm, I'm back and forth in terms of how much we need to do that to, if we're not going to touch this policy otherwise. It's good language to add. Yeah, and yeah. I, I think you could take it right off of the, you know, the open meeting law exemption for, yeah. it's, it's very clearly okay. called out in mm -hmm. there, so it would be an easy transfer and actually maybe even something to put in the grid. Um, I, I think though, that is so a good I, point. I would, say, I would say though, I agree with you that, that the, it can come out of the open meeting law, but I, I would want to put sort of the, the counter statement too. So it's it's one thing that it is appropriate for executive session. I'm more thinking about the call out that it's inappropriate for an open okay, meeting that's right. not an executive session. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah. So if we could get something in there like that, I think it would be beneficial. Mm -hmm. Yep, I think that's a good suggestion. That's kind of the reason we didn't want to put 
specific to Alice and well, And that was in the host of reasons, right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yes. yeah exactly. So what would be helpful is if we had uh, some suggested language. Uh, and I'm, I'm looking here, I'm flipping through for my reasons for open meeting as a, begin, as a starting point. But um, I think, John, if it follows that place where you called out diagrams of school facility interiors will not be made public, except in certain... In these, in, maybe it follows that statement. Similarly, yeah, because it's the same thing, right? Sim mm -hmm. School administrators will share diagrams only with emergency responders. It, it's the same thing about our policies and uh, security policies and procedures, right? I mean, we're yep, yeah. right. we're saying the same thing. And I, I think I you, mean, you would want to broaden it to include equipment, yeah, to, potentially. So you could you you could actually just blow out the sentence, right? You could say diagrams of school facility interiors, school safety and security procedures, and, and, equipment. A, and equipment and controls will not be made public. School administrators will share this information only with emergency responders, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, we might have to tweak some of the words in the rest of the paragraph where it gets into like electricians, but I think that generally would accomplish the goal. Yep. Okay. Okay. Diagrams of school facility interiors, comma, school safety and security procedures and equipment and controls will not be ma made public, period. And then we'll look at this other exception piece about the electrician. I think this is a good example, John, of the history that individual school committee members have and different conversations that have happened in the past that, you know, that, that's why we all have a different, a different perspective when we bring it to policy. Um, that's a really important um, connection to this policy in, in a time that we want to be able to refer back to this and something that I had overlooked. So I think that's a really, really valuable addition. Um, why don't, unless there are other, why don't I bring it back? Yeah, um, I think that makes sense. Play with the language, bring it back, check with my colleagues here, and uh, we'll bring it back to for a, next, for a second meeting. Sounds good. Okay. Excellent. Okay. okay, so we can move <coughs> on to um, School Committee Policy, JICFB bullying, and I will congratulate us on being five minutes ahead of schedule. Oh, we can say that, that, that is not a joke. Just saying. Out. We learned the last week more we jumped ahead. Oh, so. right. Even more. Okay. I mean, do you, do you, like, tell the pitcher the fourth <laughs> inning they have a no-hitter going, no, I too? Just, yeah, <laughs> I knocked what? on all the wood. <laughs> <laughs> she knocked on all the wood. Um, <laughs> listen, we are prepared for the I meeting, know. so we're good. I'm just making my note. We're going to bring it back for a second reading, and I just have to do this. You move so quickly, Jean. Oh, I have to try speed. to keep up with you. Yes. So, um, bullying. Yes. So while this um, policy requires periodic review, um, we specifically have it on the agenda for tonight, um, really to ha to ask the school committee to vote to form a subcommittee because as we began to review this policy, it became very apparent that the current policy is very, very long and was basically back when we were required where everybody was mandated to come up with a policy. It appears that what happened back then was that the model language was, was pretty much adopted as, as is. Um, and so it's really not specific to the way in which we do things here. Um, an example was a district climate team. They reference a DCT, mm -hmm. um, among other things. So the, the, there's going to be considerable work required. I know that Dr. Kavanaugh has reached out to Karen Renault. I did. I met with Karen Renault, who is our new subject matter leader for PE and wellness K-12. And we, when we met, we realized that there are a couple of different documents. So there is the school committee policy. Then there are the reporting forms and things like that. But there's also the Hopkinton Public Schools Bullying Prevention and Intervention Plan, which is a separate document that is, as Dr. McLeod said, about 33 pages long. It's enormous. It was originally written by a committee in 2010. 
it was updated in 2014, but as Karen and I went through the document just very briefly, you could see that there were great big sections of it that were outdated. For example, the district climate plan, parts of um, the our purported curriculum, things that we are actually presenting in classrooms, and the product that we were using, those kinds of things have changed markedly over the last seven years. So it does, I think, warrant a good looking at. Okay. So, so do, we, do we have a recommendation for the sort of the, uh, the makeup? The makeup. Membership? Yeah. Exactly. Oh, do I have a recommendation? Yeah. I do. Or, okay. I do. So um, I looked at the makeup of the prior committee. Um, although we're working from a document, the recommendation would be that it be chaired by, is it Reno? Reno. Did I say it wrong? Yes. Reno. Reno. I have Reno. Reno, um, who has replaced Bruce Elliott as our SML, as Dr. Kavanaugh just said, that she chair. Um, we want to, t I want to recommend that the committee be made up of representatives of staff, parents, um, students, and community members, um, as well as, as well as their clearly should be a school committee member on that as well and community members yes um, we have listed under the motion but it looks like there is not a school committee member listed in there um, okay. and it would probably be wise to have one of our policy mm -hmm. um, working group members be on this given that it's policy work I, w I would like to do that is there if Jen it's, it's okay go ahead okay. Okay. Um, and how, how many people do you think you want to do? Okay. Just one of each of those? Or? When, if we go back to the 2010 committee members, and Jean, your name is listed yes, as you'll one notice of that I, the day, yeah. I think that there were about 20 people on there with focus group. I would suggest underneath. that that was too many. Too many. Ample. <laughs> Yeah, when, when Karen and I spoke, we thought that about half of that might be appropriate because when you have 33 pages to go through, it might be unwieldy to try to do that with yep. that many people. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think we do want to call out that we want representation um, from HPTA and CPAC. Okay. Uh, it's called, yes. I keep, it, I keep it, going, going back to speak. Yes. It's CPAC. CPAC. Yeah. Um, and when we talk about staff, we want administration as well as teacher representation within that 10? Yes, I think last time there was an elementary principal and the high school assistant principal. Because it's, 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 it's experienced differently. Mm -hmm. Does what guidance have, would, would a guidance counselor make sense? <coughs> or would you include that under teacher? I mean. So we the the category is staff, but yeah. Um, and I think the SRO. Yeah, I was right. Yeah, yes. definitely. So do we want to yeah call out guidance? Mm -hmm. All right, I'm at eight before I get to parents. So we have Karen. Oh, youth and family services. Okay, yeah. now I'm at nine. Yep, but yeah, Denise. Yes, absolutely. I want to pull uh, somebody from the diversity group. <coughs> okay, that's a community member. Mm -hmm. Community member. And then, do we want um, an elementary and a secondary parent? So some of these things can double, can up, double right? up, right? So, like HPTA, you you see who maybe see who they provide, and if it's an elementary or a secondary parent, you mm -hmm. might be covered there. Right. Do you mind? Reviewing what you so have there. I so I'm up to twelve. If everybody wears only one hat, um, I have a school committee member, our wellness subject matter leader, um, a member of the HPTA, a member of CPAC, an elementary principal, a secondary principal, the school resource officer, a guidance counselor, our director of youth and family services, a representative from the diversity group, an elementary parent, a secondary parent, and we haven't mentioned a student. Maybe a high school student. Mm -hmm. So that's 13 if everybody wears only one hat. What did you say after SRO? Um, a guidance counselor. Okay, I missed somebody. But I'll get it. You and I will connect. We don't yes. have to go through it again. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I guess the only thing, given that we're making notes at a public meeting, I wouldn't necessarily say principal. We could say administrator. Administrator, okay. Their time is so... Right. Right. So an elementary and a secondary administrator. Yep. 
But the, in, in terms of the community people, we could, like John said, double up, double up their roles so that we don't have to have two, we don't have to increase the numbers significantly. Right. Mm -hmm. you, you, could do it, you could do it intentionally. You could right. ask those groups right. and then based on what they, who so they provide, you can see if you have a gap. If you, you might have taken care of both parents yep. in that, through that. Okay. All right. So in terms of the how the invitation is going to be made, should we start by just inviting a member of each of the groups that we've identified and then see what kind of a gap we have for parents before we decide whether or not we need to do something more broadly? Like what we're doing with yeah. the superintendent screening so. committee, does that make sense? Yep, definitely. Because there's not a particular deadline that we're working against. There is not. Okay. We had hoped um, our working group to bring this back to you by February. So we could look, we could go out immediately pretty much to start forming the group and then uh, help go between meetings at the next meeting, come back and see where the gaps are. Okay. Yeah, and because Ms. Reno is relatively new to the district, I wouldn't mind serving to sort of, you know, sort of help her along with the process. Great. That'd be great. That's awesome. Excellent. Okay. Thank you, Carol. Okay. So h how about if um, Dr. McLeod, what if we delegate this mm -hmm. to Mrs. Kavanaugh Dr. and Dr. Kavanaugh? Oh, and then it could be the Kavanaugh committee. <laughs> That's right. And then we'll just be pleasantly surprised we on will. October 19th by what they bring back. That would be wonderful. I think that sounds excellent. That's awesome. That's a good plan. Okay. And so, so part of that will be um, just confirming the makeup of the committee as well. Okay, so yeah, so on at our next meeting, we'll have this sort of skeleton um, crew, and we'll see what gaps we have and how we want to fill them at that point, but I think that's a good start. Does that sound good to everybody? Yep. Okay, excellent. Okay. So no motion? So, right, so we'll do the motion at the next one yep. when we... And you'll, we'll be asking Dr. Kavanaugh and Ms. Kavanaugh to come back with their recommendations, right? That's right. Okay. Excellent. Love it. There's a t-shirt in there. There too. is. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So now we are up to policy BDB, school committee officers. Um, it's just if I don't write it down yep, by no, the time no, the meeting's right over, ahead. I will have lost Take it. Take call Okay. So BDB. So this has been shared through School Messenger, and we're looking at this. Oh, this one's really easy. Yep. Okay. So um, this is, again, periodic review. This In, in reviewing this, um, Jen noted that there's outda outdated language in this policy, specifically the last paragraph, in that we don't have a secretary. Right. So the recommendation of the committee, it, of, the sub, of the working group, is that we keep the policy as is, other than removing the section at the end re re referencing secretary. And just remove that entire section and otherwise we believe that it still represents the roles and responsibilities of the school committee officers. Okay. I, does anybody have any questions? My only question is we had talked at um, one of our recent meetings about do we need to be more inclusive with our pronouns okay. going forward, not yep. to start all over from scratch no, no, no. with every, but as we go. So I, that might be something we could start with this um, this policy. There's only a couple places where we have he, she, they. Just yeah, she, and they. I think it's just really twice in that second sentence. His, her, there, there, yeah. Okay. I like it. But other than that, I think that uh, this has already gone out. We've gotten no feedback. Pretty straightforward, I think. We could nobody cares. Sure. Right? Now we have a secretary. For the yeah, they don't. Um, so I think we could, if anyone were so inclined to move to approve policy BDB school committee officers as amended. So moved. Okay, in a second. Second. Um, so a motion by Ms. Devlin, a second by Ms. Kavanaugh. All in favor? Yes. 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 And um, anybody opposed? Okay. And Mina had to leave. Okay. Um, so school committee.
policy GBEB and JLCC. <laughs> she says that really well. She actually. did not do a bad job. So Megan just it just flows off Sounds of her like tongue. PBGB. It does. Yeah. And right, so we were going to record her saying it. But basically, <laughs> what we're we're asking you to look at on this policy is that it the GBEB and JLCC are the two policies that are basically the same. One is referencing students, and one is referencing staff members, and that's why they're separated. J pertaining to students, and policy GBEB pertaining to staff. When we looked at it carefully, it did appear that in separating it, it would require substan some substantial changes. It wouldn't just be a matter of saying GBEB and let here it is because we would need to remove any references to children. And similarly, under JLCC, we would have to remove any references to staff. And in trying to think about what the group back in <coughs> 2011 might have been intending, it felt like they were intending to to um, to help me out here to make it simplify it, to simplify it, streamline it, right? And so it feels like we'd be going in the opposite direction to the intention then. But in addition, we believe that this um, referent this this policy should be cross referenced mm -hmm. to attendance, which we're going to be getting back to under old business. Um, because we did talk about communicable diseases in that in that case. So having discussed this at length, our recommendation is that we not make any changes. Um, and even though we have it on the agenda, it was with the intention of reviewing it. Mm -hmm. And so it's been reviewed. The working group does not believe it makes sense to, uh, to separate the two. But we do believe that it should be cross-referenced and is currently not cross-referenced under policy JH. So we don't we don't need action on this, right? We just we need action on the other policy to add that in. Unless the members Unless, disagree. Yeah. Fine. I'm I'm just taking a quick scan to see if there's a pronoun oh situation in here, which there is not. There there definitely is there are three, four Places where we say child instead of student. I don't know how picky. But we're saying them. child every time or not? No, it okay. goes back and forth. Um, but I mean, that's just such a, a small and picky thing. Okay. Um, well, we we could change it. I mean, we're looking at it. It wouldn't be a long. I mean, really, in the event a student with a communicable disease qualifies for services as a handicapped child, I mean, it, it does it, it it does feel like it should be consistent. And for a child returning after having a yeah. communicable disease. Instead of student. Right. So if we just go in and have every time we reference child replace it with student, that's so easy to do. Okay. And to not have to pull them out for that specifically, but when we're looking at it. Mm -hmm. So you could move it as a, well, then do we, do we need to have an action on it? Then we do. And then we're just cross-referencing each policy with each other or cross posting it is that yes that's what we're doing okay so so can i suggest i that i think given the uh yeah, given that we're here, it, it makes sense in the actions on the agenda, it makes sense to take an action on it. Mm -hmm. I, I do have a question that I don't know if it's worth asking somebody, which is if we are just going to go into a policy and change the word child, word child to student for consistency sake, do we really need to revote all these policies? Right, right. No, no, I, I, I think, think so. this may be a friendly administrative, a, 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 not an yeah. administrative correction yeah. that I don't think anyone would look upon as Correct. an right. actual fundamental change. amendment to the policy. Okay. Right. But again, we're out of lawyers on the committee. It was like 40% a couple of years true. ago. Now they're in there. <laughs> so um, so I, I don't know if that's something we can check on. Okay, sure. That would certainly make it easier. Yeah. 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 Get it done in a week. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> Find all, replace all. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's really grammatical, isn't it? Yeah. So are we taking any action? Or are we take, Do we need to take an action to... I don't know if it's combine, condense, cross-reference. <laughs> Does it need a vote to cross-reference the attendance policy, or can that just be added in without a vote? 
Under attendance. We'll, we'll uh, as I said, I mean, we're, I, I feel like let's just well, let's, let's just vote so it as can, amended tonight because yeah. okay. we're because we're again we're here and it's on okay. the agenda. So uh, if somebody comes back and tells us no, it's an amendment any time, or at least we're done. So right. I I would move to uh, approve policy GBEB slash JLCC as amended because we're keeping them together, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So second. Second. Okay, so motion by Mr. Graziano, second by Ms. Devlin. All in favor? Yes. Yes. And any opposed? Okay, so that is unanimous, and that is another one off our list. You guys have done a great job getting Thank these you, organized and brought to, you know, it's just really been fast and smooth to go through these. Thank you. Okay. Um, so... We're ready to move on to sure, item F, which is the Turf Field Project Stormwater Management Peer Review Fee. So um, when John and I went to the Conservation Commission Notice of Intent hearing on Monday, and I'll start this whole conversation by saying it's entirely our fault that this is that this got jammed into the packet after the Friday deadline just because it came up on Monday and their next meeting is before our next meeting, so we wanted to take care of this. Um, it wasn't necessarily unexpected, but it wasn't planned as part, it wasn't included in our agreement with Gale Associates. So um, the good news is that the regular permitting fees were waived by the town because we're a town entity. Um, the other good news, as John shared earlier, is that they were amenable to they brought up the order of conditions, which is really separate from the turf field project, but they were amenable to um, reducing our obligation in that regard. Um, but what we didn't anticipate is that they did require a peer review of services related to the stormwater management plans by Gale, um, and so we have to pay for that. So that's what you see here is the... Um, we don't it hasn't been done we don't have an invoice but this is just a, an approval for the amount um, and you can see the letter in your packet and um, so we have a recommended source for um, for payment of the fee which is that central office gift account where the money from um, the BAA and the 26.2 foundation gets deposited so it's sort of that's what we've used for all of the rest of this project as well so I don't know if there are questions or if there's anything that you guys want to add to that little recap no I think you I think you covered it um, you know this is something that was outside of the scope because mm -hmm. it, it's really a requirement of our own conservation committee to just you know check the calculations uh, I would just say so beta is a firm that a lot of the town boards use for peer review. They're the ones that did the peer review on um, the school building. Mm -hmm. So it's it, it, not that we have a choice in what firm <laughs> they pick, but yeah. it is one that's familiar with a lot of our town work. So I think that should make it easier. So any questions? Okay. So I am looking for a motion to approve the fee in the amount of $3,450 from beta for the artificial turf fields project stormwater management peer review to be funded through the central office gift account. So moved. And a second? Second. Okay, so a motion by Ms. Cavanaugh and a second by Mr. Graziano. All in favor? Yes. Yes. And any opposed? Okay, thank you. Um, so now we can move on to old business A. Oh, no, we already took care of that. that. See, so look don't at say that. it out there loud. There we go. Just go. Just keep going. <laughs> Fourth mm. inning, no hitter. We're, no talking yeah. in the dugout. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We're not going to jinx anything. Um, so we are up to Old Business B, School Committee Policy, BEDH, Public Participation at Committee Meeting. The school committee asked uh, that we include some language around reminding representatives um, of the public <coughs> nature of the meeting. And the language was not previously included um, as we discussed it at our last meeting, so it's there tonight for your consideration. And with the inclusion of this uh, language, our working group recommends that the 
um, that the policy be approved as amended. Okay, any questions? Okay. Um, you guys really do good work. Look at this. Don't, like, don't laugh. we I can't know. even <laughs> take anything apart. It's great. Okay, so I'm just looking for a motion to approve policy BEDH as amended. So moved. And a second? Second. So a motion by Ms. Devlin, a second by Ms. Kavanaugh. All in favor? Yes. 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 Any opposed? So that is unanimous and approved. Um, and we had talked about, uh, too, now that we have this new revised policy of just leaving copies in our um, regular school committee meeting box so that when people do come for the first yep. time, we, we can, can give it to them. Give it to them. Yep. And it's so well written that they will know exactly what to do. So I'm just going to make a note of that. Copies. So now we can move on to school committee policy BEDH. No, nope, that's the one we just did. Sorry. JH, student attendance. And I'm just saying we're on a roll. So. Is that like a warning to me? That I, I, that's not directed at anybody in particular. 45 people who show up for the second public comment now. Um, <laughs> 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 Parking lot's filling up. Uh, okay, so. We have discussed this already a couple of times. So tonight, what we'd like to bring your attention to is the language that we discussed last week, uh, or last meeting around extended absence. I'll read it. Students who will be out of school for extended periods of time, parentheses one month or more, should contact their building principal regarding withdrawal and re-enrollment re procedures. The school district will not be responsible for curriculum, instruction, or assessments missed during this absence. Um, the language around contacting the principal regarding withdrawal and re-enrollment procedures is really important because legally, unless the student is enrolled somewhere else, we, are, we cannot unenroll them. So unless the student will be homeschooled and the parent is withdrawing with the intent of homeschooling or withdrawing for the purposes of enrolling them somewhere else. We have a legal obligation to maintain their um, enrollment within our school system. What we're calling out within this attendance policy is that therefore, even though they are still enrolled within our district, we do not believe it should be the responsibility of our teachers, administrators to bridge that gap for the numbers of weeks that individuals have been withdrawn from our system even though they may still maintain enrollment within the district. So we're, we're caught legally and we, we want to maintain that responsibility absolutely um, in, in terms of overseeing the safety of the student but to be also responsible for their educational, um, their education, the, the assessment, et cetera. Um, is very, very challenging, as you can clearly understand by, by your heads nodding. So I think this was a really important, when we took this back after your very thoughtful discussion around attendance to begin with as parents um, and as school committee members representing the parents, when we brought it back to our principals, this was, this was feedback that they gave us, and, and we have it on the agenda for your consideration. Um, in addition, there was one last minute change uh, that Nancy recommended and that would be uh, to change the word previous in the fifth bullet to prior. Mm -hmm. Other exceptional reasons with prior approval of the school's principal we felt was a better way of expressing the intent of that bullet. And then finally adding reference on the policy cross reference to GBEB JLCC. You did that well. Thank you. That was very nice. Practicing practice in all day. Megan coached her. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she did. We she did, did practice job. after you left. Mm -hmm. Okay, any other questions? Thoughts? We're this there. One? This one we seem to use the word child <coughs> consistently. Okay. So there's not a discrepancy. So 
So we'll leave it. We can leave it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, actually, we have student and child sometimes. Where? Like under attendance officer, we have the there is reference to student. Okay. But then, in the beginning, there's reference to child. I don't know. It, I think it should be to John's point. I think yeah. it should be student. Student. Yeah, I think yep. it should be a default. Okay, so we'll just change. Change to child student. student. Yeah. Okay. Um. Okay. Since we're cleaning things up, we will add yes. that. But otherwise, is there anything else? I think we finally got it. Very good. Okay, so we just need a motion to approve policy JH school student attendance as amended. So moved. And a second. Second. A motion by Mr. Graziano and a second by Ms. Cavanaugh. All in favor? Yes. 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 And any anybody opposed? So we that is also approved. So I, I will let you know that this will um, be shared obviously with the principals and will result in a change to the handbook. Right. Okay, so that was a lot of policy work. Very we wanted to get done. it in because that we're not going to bring new policy to you in November or December. And, that was great. And again, Gosh. thank you to the entire policy committee because we had a lot of policy work in the agenda, and that's usually something that bogs us down historically, yep. but it did not because right. of all the pre-work that was done, so yep. thank you. It went really smoothly, and we got a huge chunk of them done, so that's excellent. All right, so um, the next item on our agenda is the successful candidate profile for the upcoming superintendent search. And so just to recap our process for people who are listening. This is the sort of final document that we need to prepare in terms of um, getting ready to evaluate superintendent candidates. And um, so what we have done so far is take the one that we used the last time when we successfully hired an outstanding superintendent and updated it. Um, and the way that we did that in order to comply with the open meeting law was that we all read through it and sent our um, suggestions to our Director of Human Resources who has just compiled them all together and sent them back to us. So um, it's, we have it in here three different ways just so anybody that wants to can see every step that was taken. It's kind of cumbersome. But our goal tonight is to finalize and approve this document so that we can be ready to continue to move forward um, on our superintendent search. So. Having said that, um, the group edit process is always a little bit challenging, so if anybody has a suggestion about how to proceed, I'm certainly open to it. If not, I think we just start at the beginning and go through it. This is where we're losing our three to five minutes. Mm -hmm. Yep. Potentially. Maybe not. All right, well, let's just start with, I think the first section is really about the qualities that we're looking for. And then the second section is really about the priorities um, that we want them to focus on in the first six months of their employment. So, um, I mean, I have some grammatical suggestions, but does anybody have sort of a content suggestion for this first section around a visionary able to take the district's success to the next level? You're looking at the red line version, am I correct? I'm looking at the printed, the one that's the, after the red line. Oh. Yeah, that seems, I think that's the easiest one. I thought that would be the easier one. Or maybe it's the first one, but maybe. it's the one without all the editing. Um, I mean, I guess the, so the overall question is to what, because there are things that I, suggestions that I could make that are probably more stylistic than anything else, and I, I, did, I don't, I'm just, sort of reluctant because I feel like wordsmithing it at this point is it's not going it, to I mean if you know if, if I like the wording of able to take the district successes to the next level I might alter that slightly but again that's not going to change I think the candidate that we're going to get or the meaning right. of it so mm -hmm. I'm sort of disinclined to line by line it that way right I agree I we went through it once we yeah. submitted all of our recommendations or suggestions whatever and and Maybe some were included here and some weren't, but like you said, I mean, it doesn't change the, the greater meaning of the document. It's just minutia. 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. I would put this word first, but I don't. It's fine. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Okay. Um, just for cleanup sake, I'll just tell it. You know, I'll I'll tr I'll take notes on the grammatical things, um, and send those to Kim. And then, well, I'll take notes on all of it. So, just grammatically, are there anything, any issues that you see in this first section? I was going to say take out and in that first bullet after um, after pre mm. predecessors. Yes. And then in the third bullet, vision does not need to be capitalized. Um, but that was all that that I saw. <coughs> so, okay. So are we good on the first section? Yep. Okay. So the second section, experienced and ready to handle challenges in a community with unprecedented growth. This is a new section, which I think is really on point. I will say it's not really parallel with a visionary, a skilled decision maker. Um, although we do have experienced and knowledgeable about municipal finance, so maybe that's not <coughs> really out of sync. Does anybody have suggestions on this section? This could be viewed as stylistic, but I don't actually think it is. I, I, I don't really love a community with unprecedented growth. Okay. I, I think a rapidly growing community. I just think that makes it feel like, <laughs> like how do we know it's never happened? <laughs> We're making assumptions. Okay, so I will add in rapidly going, growing community and take out with unprecedented growth. Where is that? Am I in the wrong place? In the title. That one? Go, go, go back down. Go back down. Right there. Does this make a strong enough statement about, I know we refer to the changing de demographics, but does this make a strong enough statement about all the work that we're doing regarding diversity in the district? Or is that more appropriately made in a different section? I think any good candidate will interpret that to mean challenges of diversity. Okay. I mean, we can't figure that out. Self-selecting. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's what I mean. <laughs> okay, and you should feel free to critique as, as we mm -hmm. go along as well. All three of you, of course, jump in. Um, a skilled decision maker and problem solver. It, I noticed one, there's one grammatical thing, there's a weird colon in the second bullet mm -hmm. that can come out. Um, We have the she, he here in the fourth bullet, so I don't know if we want to be Just add the, add the pronouns. They. The tricky part with adding there is that's grammatically incorrect because it's a plural. So what would you what would you ensure that they are ensure that they are well versed? She, he, he, she, they. Oh. Because right, we're speaking then, about an individual, right. so that it isn't a they, it's, a, it's an individual. Okay. So, I, I mean, I, I know where you're going. There is no pronoun, per se, that would address what we're trying to address. That's the tricky part. All right, right. so we'll leave it and as he, she for this one? Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. Okay. Um, I wrote a really outstanding suggestion that I can barely read, but let's see. Um acts com calmly and decisively in situations of student safety and places student safety above all other considerations. As the final bullet there. In this decision maker problem solver section? Yes. Sure. Okay. Um, are we ready to move on to the experienced and knowledgeable about municipal finance? budget development process and al alternate sources of funding public and private did anybody have any I find I, I find the addition to the header and the additional bullet to be redundant to each other okay which 
Should we take it out in the I'd header? I'd take it out of the header myself. And so I'll, it feels really tactical, so that's why I take it out of the header. After process, I'm going to yeah. delete the rest of the header. Okay. Is there anything else? Oh. All right, I don't want to jinx it, but this is going pretty smoothly. Okay. You keep trying. I know, I do. <laughs> Successful organizational and educational leader of a high-performing district. Um, I have a couple of grammatical things in here, but is there a content, any content changes or suggestions? The, right. the second bullet I had trouble. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I made some, I took out the and, I, and I changed transitioning to transition, so it says will transition into our existing organizational structure and be able to enrich discussions and work based upon his or her own experience with successful practice. That's Maybe better. just cross out with successful practice because I'm not sure. Just based on well, their own sometimes experience. You, sometimes you learn from. Uh, or we can leave it in. Yeah. I was going to say sometimes you learn from things that weren't successful too. True. Yeah, I, I'd cut it. Cut it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And um, in this, the bullet above, I just took out the period at the end of that sentence because we're not otherwise doing that. Um, if you want to get rid of punctuation, fourth bullet down, um, the last four words, there's a comma right between the staff and and that I don't think is necessary. On the fourth one? Um, one, last two, line. three, fourth bullet, yep. I'm sorry, wait a minute. This uh, build a sense line. of enthusiasm okay. and purpose among district staff and staff in the community. Comma. Oh my gosh, I'm so blind. I'm not Where looking, is it? I'm not seeing it either. Oh, yeah. oh here? Yeah. Staff. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Say it again. This, I know. These little small things, they'll make No, no. I love these uh, things. We'll build a sense of enthusiasm and purpose among district staff and in the community. That comma doesn't need to be there. The one between staff and community. I'm sorry, staff and and. We'll build. Where the heck? Do you see it? I don't no, see it. You're under successful thing. organization and educational leader? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was looking at it. One, two, four. three, four. Is, is able to ensure. Four. Okay, That's so the one. I think we're looking That's at the one. Oh, we'll build. I'm sorry. I thought That's it was starting it. with that. Yes, okay. I agree. I, yeah, I had you that had circle too. Okay. I had that circle too. And then okay. um, in the bullet the above space. it, there needs to be a comma after support. But mm -hmm. not, yeah, collaborate with comma mentor, comma support, comma and retain. Um, okay, and then down the second to last bullet, I think there needs to be a comma after initiatives. Um, I don't think that we need a dash after student community in the last bullet. And I yeah. don't know if you think it adds value to add in the word culture after but, you know, at the end of the list. I think yeah, it Culture does. and abilities. Yeah. Yep. And there's a period there. Oh, yep. Thank you. Okay. Are we ready to move on to the next section? Mm -hmm. Okay. Able to lead, to skillfully lead a major facilities project. Were there any content or grammatical suggestions in this one? Okay. Um, a superior communicator and community builder. There are multiple colons in the second bullet that I don't think are necessary. Colons, colon, semicolons. Colons. Yeah. Um, I don't know if this. I know the unaccepted, like the changes over and over again. Yeah. Yes. If it happens, I can relate. In the fourth bullet, is this an opportunity to add his, her there, or is that <coughs> not going to be? I'm going to defer to my English expert on that. <laughs> I think if you're not, sorry, I think if you're not putting there in, you should be consistent and not put it in. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Either use it or not use it. Okay. Fair enough. We need another pronoun. Yep. Okay. Um, okay. So is that all good on the qualities and characteristics and skills and experience that we're looking for? 
Okay, so we can move on to the tasks the superintendent should focus on in his, it, and I should ask, are you, all of you on board with this? Anything that you feel like we overlooked or? Okay. Um, and again, I'll ask you the same question as we're talking about tasks, just because you guys are the ones doing all this work. So if we missed a big thing, it'd be yes, helpful yeah. to know now. Um, Prepare to knowledgeably participate in updating our strategic plan and to implement district initiatives. So here, this is just a silly thing. Here in this section, we've switched to putting periods at the end of every sentence, whereas we did not have them in the first section. So I think we should get rid of them. Yeah. So we'll get rid of all of them? Because in the next section, we go back to no period. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, we are being judged on this document, and we should be, want to scare we away should be good at grammar. That we're not good at that. Exactly, or else they're going to say, wow, they really need me. <laughs> or say, wow, I don't want to work with that school committee. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so those are some minor things. What else? Um, Why is the second bullet bold? I don't know, but that does not okay. need to be bold. It's not more important than the other ones. Um, any, are they, any other grammatical or content questions, suggestions? Okay. Prepare the blueprint that enables consistent and frequent communication between teachers, should be teachers and, teachers, comma, parents, parents comma, community. I don't think we need school there. So I think the the dashes are indicating the relationship between the relationship teachers and parents, oh, between yeah. the school and the community, and between the school and other town departments. Oh, I see. I'm sorry. That's our triangle. That's our fidget spinner. But there should be commas, commas not semicolons. Okay. Would be my opinion. I think there should be ands instead of dashes. It would, yeah. yeah. It would it be cleaner. I, it thank you. I like that, that better. That's all you get tonight. That's I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> so I know that we're supposed to be more action oriented because these are, are six to nine month goals but I really, I, I'm struggling with prepare the blueprint I, I feel like that I feel like if I'm a candidate I'm not necessarily sure I know what that means mm -hmm. um, and, and so I, I want to like what I want to say is enable consistent and frequent communication between between those parties, but I, I wonder if that is action oriented enough for a six to nine month goal versus a long term successful quality. Prioritize consistent and frequent. Promote. Nope. Nope. Either. I don't have a. I think strong. whoever added this language, it would be helpful to go back and ask yeah. them what they meant. Because I think it's an important thing to put in, but I agree with John. It's really hard to understand as I read it now for the first time what it is you well, specifically. My guess is since none of us seem to be jumping out at maybe. Nina. Okay. It may, it may, it unless it might be good to go back and find out what. What she meant by some Although of that, this. That will oh, then we have to postpone to us. From oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. No, that's okay. I mean, to me, you know, when I read prepare the blueprint, it just sort of sounds to me like create a plan for. Okay, um, so how about create a plan for? But when I read the third but bullet do, oh, about yeah. the consistent communication plan, all caps, I, I'm. And so I guess that's also where, like, are we, is our expectation as a school committee? that this person within the period of the first six, what do we say, six to nine months, mm -hmm. will present us with a plan to enable consistent and frequent communication between these parties. And the reason I ask that is because, <clears throat> well, there's a couple things. One, like that's a, that's a very specific ask we have. And in some cases, I think it speaks to a deficiency that I don't think is there. Yes. And so that's that's the cons that's sort of the only concern I have. So I think I get what you're saying is that we're it's something we want continued, not something that we're saying we don't already have. Right. Like I don't know that, and I'm not saying it's perfect across the board, but I don't necessarily want a superintendent to come in and think they have to fix teacher-parent right. communication because I think we do pretty well at that. Mm -hmm. And so 
that that's the this makes it seem like they need to within the first six months come to a school committee meeting with the plan to, to fix. fix communication mm -hmm. and I, I that's not I mean admittedly I'm not going to be here but it is not an expectation <coughs> that I would have mm -hmm. um, so that, that's that's the only well that, that's that's why I think it, it gives me pause well I agree with that having said that I really like the first bullet yeah oh absolutely um, I, I so I'm wondering. And, and again, it's an area of continuous improvement, right? So we, we can always get better, both in those channels and then in channels where maybe we're not as successful as we are as we are right now, or as we want to be right now. So, but I just, I want to steer away from like a deliverable that we may not even want. Right. Well, what I'm wondering is if we want to move that first bullet into the section, in the characteristics section under superior commu communicator and community builder. Yeah, that may be a good way to do it. Um, and then I think it's, you know, in a more, sp something more specific than that is probably something best dealt with in the superintendent's goals, goal setting process that they'll undertake next summer. Yeah, I, I, that makes a lot of sense. This feels like a more specific task than the rest of the rest of them are a little bit more high level yeah because even as i'm reading the second bullet again it worked collaborative staff to draw to even if we don't capitalize consistent communication plan yeah we're, we're like giving this person an assignment that we haven't right. actually talked about yet right exactly all right okay so that's a, good point. that's a very good way to think about it uh, so i will move that to the the other section i'll move it just the way it's written so unless you want to edit it I will take out the period at the end. Oh, no, there isn't one, so I won't do that. Um, and then we'll just take that section out. And so then, um, because otherwise, this is all, these, these are all tasks that we have already agreed on. Strategic plan will be up for renewal, the uh, Elmwood School, and the budget. So, okay. So then moving on to the, is we ready to move on to the next section? Okay, so spearhead the community-wide eff effort to assess and address the future of the, the Elmwood School facility and the facility's usage and needs of the district. You have create avenues of communication to ensure full participation twice. Well, that's mm -hmm. it's really important. unnecessary. <laughs> Make um, it capital. That first one. It's out. actually, the, we have all of it twice. We do. Consider the impact of new developments on facilities yep. usage there twice, too. There you oh, go. Yeah. Okay. It is. Wait, where is yeah, it? it's oh, in the yes. it's in the big okay. Bullet. I'm going to keep them as separate bullets then. Yeah. Okay. And I would ask of the committee whether or not that last bullet should be applied to the new superintendent or to is it more is it more something that they would be delegating to the director of finance and operations and therefore would not be listed under something that you'd want them to do in their first six to nine months because they're new and you're director here is not well and I also feel like this this is work that you and Tim are already doing doing mm -hmm. undertaking um, I, I think the in addition to that I, and and maybe well this is long-term maintenance of buildings equipment I think maybe the bullet that's missing is I think the big then the biggest challenge with, with respect to facilities is not going to be the Elmwood solution as much as the overall solution for the fact that we're growing out of a lot of our buildings. Mm -hmm. So um, it is something to I mean you could you could actually steal half that bullet, right? Facilitate and communicate long-term planning regarding existing school facilities and capacity. Mm-hmm. Yeah, capacity, capacity needs to be in there. That's that's really. I mean, that's really the so what. It it's, feels yeah, like right. it's in the it's in the uh, it's in the title, John, where you say facilities usage and needs of the district. Obviously. Yeah, I was struggling with that because, uh, and maybe I have a connotation of facilities usage yeah. because we've done the facilities oh, use policy so much. But I think you might right. be right. Is that it might actually be referring to, like, the, take it out of the heading and yeah. add it to the language that you just said. Facilitate and communicate long-term planning regarding facilities usage and the needs of the district. So I don't think we can take it out of the heading, though, because otherwise the heading is only about Elmwood. So I True. would say spearhead the community-wide effort, et cetera, and 
and communicate long-term planning? And, and the facility, can you say, and the facilities needs of the district? And and I hate that. That doesn't sound good at all. Future, future, needs. future needs, thank you, yes. Future of the Elmwood School Facility and the future needs of the district? Yep. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. It's all-encompassing. Mm -hmm. um, and then I, so then I added a bullet, I think this is what I was supposed to do, added a bullet saying facilitate and communicate long-term planning regarding facilities usage and capacity. Yeah. Okay. So then am I also leaving that fourth bullet facilitate and communicate long-term planning regarding maintenance of all buildings, equipment, and outdoor facilities. So that is work that already has begun. Yeah. Although... Do they need to facilitate and communicate it or just be sort of like a manager or oversee or... I don't know what the right word is, but... Yep. So, so I don't think you should have to So, so remember, the, remember the, 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 the yeah, section... I think it's, maybe it's, I not think it's just part of the deal. Right, the section we're in is the, is the six to nine month objectives, mm -hmm. right? So they're going to walk into yeah. an assessment a that's already to done. Your point. Yeah. Yeah. And again, it's going to, you know, are they starting work that's already been done? That's what okay. I think we want to discourage. So I'm going to take that bullet out, but I'm going to replace it with the one that's yeah. related to capacity because that is. I would I think that's great. Okay. All right. And um, is that all on that bullet? I mean, on that section? Mm hmm. Okay, and then building the district budget. Um, Are the one, I'm gonna take two and three the, supposed to be bullets? Yeah. At the very bottom. Yeah. yeah, okay. I'll standardize that. Um, and I'll take out all the... Um, I'm not sure, and I don't know why I didn't think of this before. I'm not sure that develop a plan to retain and advance administrators in the district to ensure continuity of leadership belongs in the budget, because... If it's in the budget, there's really only one way you can do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that maybe needs to get moved. I think you've already, I think you've covered that earlier on when you've talked about valuing and mm -hmm. providing. Yeah, again, doesn't feel like a six to nine month objective. It no, feels like a job of the superintendent. Like, right. yeah, yeah, and it feels like you've really covered that. You've really stressed it you know, in a very positive way that you value the team and you want someone to come in and. Right, we said collaborate with, mentor, support, and retain. Yep. Mm -hmm. Are strong. Okay, so that Although, one. That's different no, than the plan. No, take it out. Take it out. I think I get it differently now that because retain and advance administrators does actually probably fit into the budget because it speaks to like succession, su su yeah, succession planning and that type of thing, but I, I still don't, I wouldn't put it in. Well, you can't advance them unless there's an opening, and if you're retaining them, there won't be. So it is kind of challenging. <laughs> Decent a little bit point. of a catch-22. Um, what about this? <laughs> bit of a catch-22. <laughs> what about number two? Is that what we just talked about in the section above? Or is yeah, it also it is. belong in, in budget? Like, I mean, it's a little bit does different it need to because... Be in budget, too, or something like that? Does it need to be in budget? I'm also not sure what lead the community-wide effort is. Mm. I, I'm, I'm unfamiliar with that. Yeah, it would be start. I, I right. picture a torch and running yeah. through the <laughs> yeah, down Main Street. Um, and I think it's covered. I get the – and again, this be, again the 10-year the, the capital plan, correct me if I'm wrong, we're going to be talking about that next spring, right-ish? Okay, so so, so again, we're, we're, I don't think we're going to support the development and socialization of a new 10-year capital plan. It's going to be developed. Okay, so we're going to take out B. Mm -hmm. Are we going to move A above to the... Well, I think we already covered it in the above. Did Does this does A say it better than what we said? That's very possible. I kind of think it does. Yeah, I, I think it does. Um, so I'm going to replace the new bullet that we made up with A. Uh, so can I, instead of replacing the new bullet with A, what if you replace the header with A? Well, it's not just enrollment concerns, though. But you could say current enrollment and facility concerns. Okay. But that, I mean, it's a really all-encompassing statement. It's about solving the bigger problem and okay. the Elmwood solution. Okay, so I will replace the header. I can still take out the bullet that we added. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. 
and then um, collaborate with town departments. That's a really important one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So now under build the district budget, we have B and be seen as a fiscally responsible, thoughtful, rational, and practical manager of public resources for the good of all, I added all, students. Like that. Um, did I take out number two? Yes. Okay. Um, and one. And one. Right. We took out one, we took out two, we took out B, we moved A, so we are left with two bullets. Mm -hmm. The second one being collaborate with the town departments. Um, I, I think we should put something in here about a, a transparent, about transparency. Um, you know, that's what, that's, I mean, we obviously all do, we do all of this in public and we feel like we're very transparent, but still with the cry for things like ClearGov, people are not feeling like they have as much access to the information as we think they do. So there's a disconnect there somewhere. Um, so could we say, I mean, we could, we could add a bullet in. You talked about transparency in here earlier. Yeah. Is a fiscally responsible, thoughtful, transparent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, if we're adding yeah, all these, you know, adjectives, you could just add it into there. Yeah, we have such a long list. How about if we add in <coughs> transparent and we take out, I don't know, I don't think we need thoughtful and rational, and maybe we don't right. need either. Can, can we especially if in the vein that we're adding the word transparent can we get rid of and be seen as i find it weird to say be and be seen as because it okay. it suggests that there's an alternative I agree that you could be that and not be seen as right. i thought the wording had to be like that, that your public so self right but i think that's that I, I think and be seen as might actually be trying to get at the transparency piece mm -hmm. right it is and right. so let's just put the word in okay so be a fiscally responsible, transparent, thoughtful, rash, no, transparent and practical manager of public resources for the good of all students. I like that. Good. I really like all in there. I want to make sure. I, I don't like the word good. I think maybe the benefit. Okay. I was struggling with good. <laughs> benefit. Yep. Yeah. Better word. Okay. okay. Anything else? Oh, for the good of all students? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I agree benefit. Okay, anything else? I just have a couple high level questions that I want to make sure are <coughs> I feel like are addressed in here. One is our special needs population. Have we been specific enough about the level of um, knowledge, dedication, success, whatever, um, that we want them to demonstrate? I don't necessarily think it needs to be in the tasks because I don't think there are big gaps that are needing to be addressed. I just want to make sure maybe in the characteristics that we've that we've adequately referenced our special needs population, the increasing work that we're doing um, in diversity, not just within the district but across the town. Um, and then the other sort of cohort um, that came to mind was, you know, our sort of gifted and talented students. Is there a mention that needs to be made somewhere in the context of this? Of that group? I think it's really important, and I don't have the same pages as you, Jean, because I'm looking at the redlined version, okay. but I think what you're getting at is such an important thing to call out under your discussion about a high-performing district. Um, and so when I look at this, successful organizational and educational leader of a high-performing district, and you have bullets listed there, I think somewhere in there it would be very appropriate to include the fact that it's a high-performing district with high expectations for all students, but somehow bring in the piece that there we have students who struggle as well right. mm -hmm. and that those 
it's really important to meet their needs. Meet their needs to have programs in place. It's not just for the high performing. It's a high performing district because there are programs to support all learners right. at all levels. And we do have the diversity piece in the in the um, in the last bullet, but yeah, so I agree. I think that seems like the section to yeah, add. It feels like it's missing something. I mean, we have it in abilities in that last bullet, but I feel like that's not a strong enough statement. To draw it out a little more clearly. Yes. Um, yeah, I mean, you could add ability in that last bullet. You don't have a bill. Oh, yeah, I do abilities, it, yeah. but it kind of doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't. It we sort of that. buried the lead with that, I think. Mm. Supports. So you've got recognize the contribution of every staff member. Mm -hmm. And again, teaching staff. I don't know that it makes it more powerful, but you could put in that bullet you were just talking about um, learning abilities, and then that addresses the variation in abilities from severe needs to gifted and talented. It's not very powerful, but it at least expresses our, I mean, is that the, what's implied by the word abilities? Is that where you're, what that's addressing? I'm thinking something like this, recognizes the wide range of educational needs and educational and programmatic needs of a diverse, so now we're talking diversity as it applies to learners, right? Recognizes a wide range of educational and programmatic needs as it relates to, I'm looking to you to help me. Disparately abled students. That's great. Right, right, because it really calls out the disparity amongst ability. I think that's and that and that's that runs the gamut. It does. Okay. Thank you. I, yeah. I feel like that was an important addition. Um, okay. Did we do it? We didn't feel like we did. Okay. How are you gonna group I'm editing? Just curious. Is, how are you sharing this now? Now well, that it's all, you've got an applicant pool beginning to build. Mm -hmm. People have already applied and haven't necessarily seen this. True. So I will, A, defer that question to Kim, okay. but B, expect that probably the next step after I clean this up and send it back to her is to give it to NESDEC and let them make sure that they communicate it um, to the pool. To the pool. Okay. Yeah. And obviously to the screening committee. Yep. Because anyone doing their homework will have already searched the district for this kind of information. Right. Um, and the fact that it's updated is great. It feels like you might want to push it out intentionally. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like this is as much, to that point, is as much a tool for the screening committee as okay. it is yes. for the candidates who are, who are coming in. So okay. they're, they're, they're members of the screening committee yeah. who might come in and, and have an idea of Fair what they're enough. looking for in a superintendent but be interested in about mm -hmm. specifics. So. so to your point, <clears throat> it will be helpful for the screening committee to know what the school committee is looking for. Right. right, yeah, okay, good point. So, um, shall we vote on that? I would make a motion to approve the successful candidate profile for the upcoming superintendent search as amended. Yeah. Second. Okay, so motion by Mr. Gaziano, second by Ms. Kavanaugh. All in favor? Yes. 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 Any opposed? Okay, that was far less painful than I thought it might be. Okay. Um, so we are now at the portion of our agenda for public comment, and I see no one in the audience, unless any of us are inspired to make a public comment. I think we can move right along to items by consensus. Is there anything that anybody would like to hold out to discuss separately? Do we, are the minutes? The minutes were not in the packet. No, so but they were, they they were, were, they were in the separately. folder separately. Okay. So are we all, we're ready to include all oh, it four? Is, it is on there. All yeah. four items? Okay. I'll turn it over to you. 
The superintendent recommends the school committee move to approve the items by consensus as outlined below. Okay, and I need a motion. So moved. And a second. Second. Motion by Mr. Graziano, second by Ms. Cavanaugh. All in favor? Yes. Yes. Any opposed? Okay. So, um, with that said, I just need a motion to adjourn. So moved. And a second. Second. Go ahead. Give it to John. Okay. Uh, <laughs> motion by Ms. Cavanaugh, second by Mr. Graziano. All in favor? Yes. 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 I, there's never anyone opposed to that. So we are adjourned at 9.55, which I would like to point out is, it? is 25 minutes ahead of schedule. So well done. Thank you, now everybody. You to talk. Yeah. Now you can say now, it. Where's the ice cream? That's right. I know. Well, the spoon we right is still closed. We did have chocolate. Thanks to Mrs. Kevin. Thank so. you, all right, so this concludes our meeting, and our next official meeting of the school committee is October 18th. Uh, we will be posted for our public forum at the middle school library, and then following that, we'll have our regular, our next regular meeting October 19th at 7 o'clock right here. So thank you very much.